Thank you. Thank you. All right, gang. Also. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Town of Canyon Select Board meeting for February 7th, 2023. Uh, we are, as usual, live streaming on YouTube, Spectral Spectrum Channel, channel <laughs> I'm all right, Cable Channel 1303. And um, also we have uh, an opportunity if you'd like to join us on Zoom as an as a, uh, attendee, the link for the uh, Zoom link is on the agenda, which can be found on the Town of Camden website under the select board under uh, agenda for this date. Uh, as usual, I remind people, if you'd like to come on as attendee, please do. If you'd like to comment on an agenda item, please raise your hand. That's much preferred. Um, we don't often get to all Q&As, and if they're not addressed, they're not in the record. So please uh, do that. And do not use the chat function. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to call to order the uh, agenda for uh, the select board, uh, starting with any public comment on a non-agenda item. Ray. What happened to Jim Bennett? Ray Andreessen, Cove Road, Camden. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Ray Andreessen, Cove Road, Camden. All right. Um, I was going to get up and say some things about um, the offer that was made at the last meeting of the select board about uh, pledges for repairs of uh -huh. Montgomery Dam. But I was informed before this meeting that we need to send a letter of request to be put onto the agenda. Um, and I just think for other people in the future who come up with some idea that should be of interest to the select board, that should be noted to them ahead of time. You will get a letter of request to be put onto the agenda. Ray, so, what I would suggest you do in this regard is, um, is, uh, is, is give me an email tomorrow and I can explain to you in detail what you need to do for the next steps. Okay, we will. Uh, deal? Either I or somebody from the well, committee Whomever will. you decide. Right. Yes, in, okay, in copy, fine. Whomever you want, right. that's fine. <laughs> Please right. do it that way. That and then just... I can explain to you right. how, how we proceed fine. and what okay. go, how but we... It, it, it would I know save a little be... anxiety about coming up here oh, for yeah. some of us about that. Um, then I just think it would be a good practice to know that for oh, other people who have course. other issues. Of course. Because um, I think for those who are tuning in and weren't uh, aware of what happened uh, two weeks ago is that the Save the Diane Falls Committee came in with pledges of $11,500 for short-term repairs to the dam that we hope will be made, Montgomery Dam, that we hope will be made for a, before the tourist season this summer. Uh -huh. So the, dams look, the dam looks in its best shape possible and the falls look in the best shape possible. And I think a lot of us want to commend the town for what is, how the dam looks right now, because the waterfall is looking very good. A lot of water. I, you know, the water is coming over. It looks really great, especially if you watch it from the other side of the harbor. Right. Um, so a lot of us have contributed money or contributed pledges of money for that, and we hope the town finds it of use. Right. Like I said, get a designee to contact me and I'll, I'll take it from there. Thank you. Right. Um, so people that are watching on YouTube right now are writing me saying that there's no sound on YouTube. You may have to repeat Juniper yourself, said, right? <laughs> so Juniper said she's aware of that and it's being recorded, but I don't... They can't hear us at all? Not on YouTube, and so I think we need to... I don't think just saying that it's being recorded and they can watch it later is... Do we have to switch to link here? I mean, I can, if you, I can do it from my computer. It's a lower quality... Ver I mean... As long as we speak loudly, it'll work? It will work for people to be able to hear. We, well, that's the only option we have. Oh, yeah. I'm just... Uh, thank you. I don't want to do it without... Let me give, let me give you a minute, a minute to do that. Let me know when it's hot. Ray, Ray, because of that, if you'd like to repeat, you're more than welcome. I think they will record, like upload be recorded. the think, other version that they're recording here later. So, thank you, thank you. Understood. Thank you. Just want to be fair. I thought it was that there was going to be a proposal. They were going to say what they wanted to spend the money on. That's what you were going to. Uh, that's what I'm going to tell them when they email me. Oh, okay. They haven't been told that yet. Um. Um, let's see, we have... Hold on, what's the date to... 
We did today's seven. seven. Yes, the seven. But somehow we lost Jim Bennett. I know he wanted to come on. I know what happened to him. Well, where, where, uh, Tom, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I just want to mention to everybody that can't see it or may not see it. Uh, Tom is remote across the world, actually, and I want to thank you, Tom, for taking the time at this ungodly hour to, to uh, participate with us tonight. But it's good to see your shining face. Yeah, you're happy to be here. Good. I don't know why that would be the... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Why would that be the... Oh, you got live stream? Yeah, but it's... Um... Somehow I lost, completely lost. Well... All right, we're going to proceed, okay? Uh, are there, I'm sorry, but are there any other public comments or non-agenda? I see a, uh, it's Peter, I think. Yeah, it's Peter. Evening. Peter Lindquist, live on Chestnut Street. Um, I'm coming to you as a member of the Budget Committee and a citizen, taxpayer, just like any other people in the room, many of you. Um, I sent an email to uh, Audra earlier, a couple days, and I thought it would be helpful for the public and for you folks to hear what I was uh, suggesting. Um, working on the budget committee for a couple of years, I found a lot of time was not really well used as far as um, oh, how information is shared. Um, the meetings are quite... Uh, uh, laborious, if you will. Um, I made some suggestions, and I'd like to share them with you. Uh, one is we uh, get some materials out from the department heads soon, like this week, like in a document, an eight and a half by 11 document from each department head that says, what are your plans? What are your plans? We don't need to worry about your uh, paper clips and your, you know, things that are not... Uh, they're, they're automatic in your budget, but the things that we can work on to do better as a planning item in a budget, um, I'd like to see that, and I think the budget committee people and the public would like to see that, so that when the budget committee meets with the town, they actually have some background, as opposed to watching a PowerPoint for 15 minutes from each department on each week that is, spells out a pretty picture of a department but it really doesn't help kind of clarify some of the nuts and bolts that will be decided, oh, wait a minute, five minutes later. If that document came out and said, particular department, geez, we're thinking about doing X. Okay, great, that's great. That's, how does that impact your budget? Is that gonna help uh, lower the cost of your department? Are you gonna save us money? And if you're gonna spend more money, why? Um, we've had some amazing uh, budget increases in the last two years. We, because of salary, what did, what did we call it, um, realignment. And so I think the public is now looking at a, a, a little more flat budget this coming year. And it would be great to see how, oh, wait a minute, the department head can plan for that. Um, if the public saw this material in advance, you would find these budget committee questions a lot more pointed and uh, helpful, I think, for, for a lot of uh, reasons. One is, uh, th it always comes up, is did you, did you overspend your budget this year or did you underspend? And why did, why did those things happen? And if we knew that, gee, a couple of weeks, three weeks in advance, we could kind of talk about that. Wouldn't that be helpful? to learn about the amount of surplus or lack of surplus that a particular department has. Okay, uh, thanks for your time. Peter, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Uh, that was the last hand I saw, so with that, I'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the approval of the board minutes for two dates, December 13th and January 17th. Let's take them separately, please, uh, because I know, Sophie, you had some comments on December 13th, and it's been documented, so uh, is there anybody, uh, do you have any other comments, anybody else on the board uh, regarding the meeting minutes? No, and I, I have to admit that uh, I haven't had a chance to thoroughly look at them. After all the comments I sent to Janice, I'm just going to assume that they're that they're okay. fine. Um, well, if we want to go for a motion, we should assume that yeah. your comments are incorporated into yeah, the I final. I think track. most of. I mean, I noticed that Roger Akeley's name was spelled incorrectly, Please. but Who's Roger name? Akeley's name was spelled incorrectly. But okay. I don't know if that was on the list of it things. It was not. It was not because I <laughs> didn't know his last name. But you can add that, so we, uh, we can So I can make a motion that we approve the minutes for the... Um, December 13th. December 13th meeting with the correction to Roger Akey's last name. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. Uh, any other further discussion? All's in favor? And Tom, I'll ask you, because you were about to give a verbal yes or no on all, all votes, please. Yes. Thank you very much, because <laughs> they can't always see you anyway thank you uh, well then uh, how about uh, January 17th 2023 so um, there's a, a slight issue that I'm, I'm super happy that I get so much power that I can both motion and second at the same time no it's not gonna work yeah I know so it just needs to be I mean at the end of the adjournment the adjournment needs to be amended that uh, Stephanie French seconded I didn't the rest uh, of my comments have been taken into account. Mm -hmm. uh, the NIFWIF, NIFWIF is N-F-W-F, not N-I-F-W-I-F, -I -I so that mm. just needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's it with those two corrections. Two corrections. I make a motion that we approve the January 17 minutes with the correction to the NIFWIF grant and to the adjournment where uh, I missed Stephanie that. French Good job. Seconded. I don't know how. S a second. <laughs> You second it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Tom? Aye. Thank you, sir. Aye. Thank you. I heard you. Great. Uh, we'll move on to item number three, which is a public hearing. This from some of the people in the audience. I can see there's going to be some, might be some positive participation. So we'll take each one of these after I give a little treat, uh, up front uh, direction. In terms of the purpose of the public hearing is for the public to provide input to the select board and deliberation of whatever matters are at hand. We're going to ask anybody who wants to speak for, against, or just speak to the matter to please come forward one at a time and uh, uh, address the board, address myself on the board. All questions would go through me as chair. Um, when all the public has had an opportunity to speak, then I will close the public portion and revert to the select board's deliberation on that matter. Please be courteous. Uh, Please respect our time as, as best you can. But with that, I will move uh, on to the first one, which is the application of Black Sea Inc. doing business as Fresh Restaurant at One Bayview Landing for renewal of a restaurant class one liquor license. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to that, this, this license consideration? Not seeing any hands, I'll close the public portion and, and revert to select board uh, decision. I make a motion that we approve the uh, application of Black Sea Inc. for renewal of a restaurant class one liquor license. Second. Motion made and second. Any uh, discussion, board? Not seeing any. Um, um, I'll go for the vote. All those in favor? And Tom, thank aye. you, thank you, Tom. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. If you don't say aye, Tom, I'll just recognize your hand. <laughs> To the second item, which is the application of Barron Restaurant at 2 Wayfarer Drive for a special amusement permit. Is there anybody here that would like to speak to that uh, from the public? Not seeing anybody, I will also close the public uh, comment on this one and revert to the select board decision. I make a motion that we approve the application of Barron Restaurant for a special amusement permit. Second. Motion made to second. Any discussion? Not hearing any, we'll go for a vote. All's in favor? Yep, got, got you, Tom. All uh, unanimous again. The last item is the application of Salt Wharf LLC at 3 Wayfair Drive for a special amusement permit. 
Anybody here from the public want to speak to that one? I guess I was wrong about public being here for the, the licenses. Okay, we will move <laughs> forward and to, to, to close the public portion and revert to select board decision. I make a motion that we approve the application of Salt Wharf for a special amusement permit. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor or Tom? Yes. Aye. Yeah, five zero. Thank you. Uh, would you bring Noah on, please? Certainly. Thank you. Um, we're going, moving on to item four, we have a number of, uh, of uh, well, referred to as action items and confirmations. The first of which is the consideration of, of the proposal we received for the audio visual for this, the French conference room. And uh, um, we are lucky to have our um, Noah Cole with us here tonight. Can, Noah, can you read us well? I can. Good. <laughs> it sounds very clear on your end. Uh, and and uh, Juniper, um, I, I, just FYI, uh, for the most part, Juniper and Noah, um, I, I have kind of described the proposal in some general sense to the board members in general. Um, but, you know, there's, this is complicated, and, and I'm sure there'll be questions for you all on how you want to proceed with this. But um, I know uh, that you helped put together a list of um, criterion, you know, or, or requests that we, we had really registered about make, making it user friendly and all these kinds of things. And that was where the proposal was generated from. Uh, does, does the board feel we need a, a description of what they're proposing? Is that what we would like, like to start there? Is yes. The, yeah, I, would, okay. I would love to hear from, yeah. from Noah okay. Okay. specifically that's, about what he understands our needs to be. And That's great. Um, that's perfect. I love it. Noah, did you get that? I did. Yep. Oh, oh you're a little quieter yeah. than anybody else on the... He's only coming from the owl. Can you uh, speak up? It's there, exactly the Noah, same as or Tom. Increase volume. Um, how's that? Any better? Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Introdu introdu so introduce yourself, Noah, because no, people don't know who you are and who you're with. Yep, I'm Noah Cole from Stone Mountain Sound, um, and um, I was tasked with putting together a proposal for um, some modifications to the room. Um, and basically, um, this, uh, this proposal does a couple things. It replaces the current audio mixer with, um, one that extends the audio components of it, um, but also adds control element too. That's what is <coughs> going to help make this room easier to use, more user friendly. Um, we can talk about what that does. And I think, um, Juniper provided you all a document, at least in the packet, that kind of also explains this too. Um, but um, I'm happy to um, go into you know, any amount of detail that you want. Um, part of this um, audio DSP and control system are two uh, touchscreen interfaces. One would be mounted in the location of the TV on the wall, and one of them would be mounted kind of in the back uh, tech area. And these two uh, seven inch touchscreen interfaces would do different things. Um, they would actually show different things um, on them. And these are custom programmed for the job. So they can show what you want and not show what you don't want. Um, and that is uh, the one near the TV would be for self-service, for simple events, for committee meetings where you're using that TV and a local uh, HDMI input. You want to show something on the TV there locally. Um, but um, you don't want to have more advanced controls, which are needed for the larger, uh, the larger meetings. So the second touchscreen would be back in the tech area that would have more advanced controls. What, what it exactly is shown on these is um, something that usually comes um, up in discussion during commissioning. So none of it's set at the moment. But for example, the touchscreen near the TV on the wall, um, you could hit one button and it would turn the TV on it would switch to the HDMI, a new HDMI input, which would be installed on the wall below the TV. It would turn on the, um, the audio system and would uh, provide audio playback from that HDMI port. 
That's an example of how it can be set up. But once again, this is a conversation that has to be had about how you want this room to be set up and what functionality you want on that touch screen, what you want on the other touch screen, um, and what you don't want to have for um, what you don't want people to have access to on uh, on that touch screen near the TV. Like I said, the one in the back can do um, a bit more. Um, or that's at least how I'm thinking of it, and that would be for someone whoever's oper for whoever's operating the tech, um, and that there may be more advanced audio controls on that, more advanced uh, options for um, what video source is shown where, uh, stuff like that. But once again, that's a discussion to be had kind of later. Um, the other component to this, another component to this too, is um, replacing the speakers in the room, uh, the audio speakers, um, to kind of fix the sound. Um, so two, there would be four speakers mounted in the space, um, two kind of pointing at the dais and two pointing at the room. Um, so there would be a couple different audio mixes happening here. Uh, the ones pointing at the dais uh, would be um, a video playback, Zoom playback, um, but wouldn't have the microphones or they could um, if you wanted to, if you're having trouble hearing from one side of the dais to the other, um, microphones from one side can be added to the speaker you know, in the speaker um, on the other side. Um, and then the room would get the same mix, essentially, except it would add the microphones from the dais. So if people were having a tough time hearing, there's a little audio lift in the space. Um, so four speakers, um, two pointing towards the audience, two pointing towards the dais, um, and then amplifiers for those speakers. Uh, like I said, there would be uh, an HDMI input added to the wall uh, below the TV. This would be in addition to the one that already exists in the space. Um, another main uh, major um, kind of upgraded component to this system is the video matrix switcher, uh, would be a new video matrix switcher. Uh, this one has um, more outputs um, because we now have a TV and a projector. We're also sending to quite a few um, destinations as well. This one actually has three different outputs, so it can show three different things in three different locations. You have more locations um, that need video than um, you have um, you know, outputs on the video switcher, so some of them would be on the same, basically um, on the same output, they'd be sharing that, so the output would be split. And those would be like the streaming, the recording, uh, uh, the Zoom, and then the TV would be kind of all combined on the same output. So they'd all show the same thing. But you could show something different on the projection screen and different on the TV. Um, and the, so the other, the other reason that, um, that this uh, new video matrix switcher is needed is because it can be controlled by the control system and the touch screen. So if you wanted to change uh, what was on the projection screen or the TV, you do that from the touch screen or from an iPad app, um, for example. So, this uh, video matrix switcher has additional outputs and it can be controlled by the touchscreen interfaces. Um, there would be a, you know, the original proposal had a new um, streaming device uh, as a part of it. However, uh, in, you know, Juniper's latest revision of the document, she's purchased um, a, a HDMI to USB interface already and there's a computer, I guess, uh, that's, our, that's been purchased or is in place. Um, and so that component um, that was going to be provided in this has already been provided um, elsewhere. Um, and then there's just miscellaneous other uh, pieces of equipment that go along with supporting that functionality, um, you know, various HDMI extenders. There's a power sequencer. Like I said, the, the system can be turned on and off, powered on and off in the proper order from the touchscreen interfaces. Um, so that would be another thing. There's also... Um, an, an equipment rack that's associated with this upgrade as well. This would be an equipment rack, not like it is now, kind of inset into the wall. It would be um, on wheels next to uh, a new, the new desk. I, I think there's a desk there. I don't know if there is one now or if there will be one. Um, but the, So this would be an external to that, and it would be locking and all of that stuff too. So uh, that's the major, uh, uh, major functionality uh, in this uh, proposal. Um, any questions? Is any of the um, um, streaming devices we have being reused or is that being replaced also? Streaming and recording devices 
for meetings. Um, so the, the recording I, device I, that you I, currently I, have is being reused. Yeah, okay. And, um, and, and, the streaming and I'll, device that you were using is going to be unused, but um, there is a new streaming device that was purchased um, outside of this proposal okay. by Juniper okay. that is being used now. Okay. Yep. And all the equipment, just to be clear, um, that's currently in the little cubby in the wall is no longer in the little cubby in the wall. It's in a in the equipment rack. Out in the room. It would, uh, somewhere near this desk out back. Is that yep. correct? So that's going to be an empty cabinet. Go ahead, Allison. Okay. So I, I'm not seeing a couple things. Um, cost. Is that, did I miss that in the documents that we have in our packet or? I thought it was. I didn't. I'm, I definitely miss things sometimes, but I didn't anybody no, else see a cost. Uh, but what, it's not in the document that I provided. It's in the the document that came from Stone Mountain St Sound. So you can tell you. We have you, that. You, you, it's Thirty-five thousand. Okay. Including labor. It's not. Either. It's including labor. At this point, there might be a couple of adjustments because it might have included in a streaming well, device well, that's not going to be does, included. Does that price reflect the change that you all made between the streaming device being something we have, a computer we have? You, okay, so that, no one mentioned mm -hmm. a computer we have. Yeah, that's where I'm saying, like, um, we're not including the streaming device, which was maybe $1,000. Oh, I see. So it's not really going to change so, so significantly. The net price is $35,000. Yeah, approximately. Uh, so I guess... Um, my main concern here is that um, I, I don't know how many years ago it was, maybe three years ago, we went through a similar process where we all acknowledged that things needed to change in the conference room, we needed to upgrade our cameras and abilities, and we spent, I, I believe we approved $25,000 then um, that was a proposal from, there are a number of other proposals. Um, one was, you know, the one that we approved was Stone Mountain and was you guys. And that, um, you know, there are, there are a few things that have been better, like the microphones. Um, but overall, it, for, for, for one reason or another, it just really didn't, meet our needs and I think the main thing um, that's been frustrating not so much just the you know the, the quality of the microphones the quality of some of the components is good but the random unpredictable cutting out of the YouTube stream um, is is just so frustrating I understand that normally we are able to when that happens we are able to record something that is in relatively good quality that gets uploaded later. And for some purposes, I, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> but um, for the purposes of town government, it's just really not. It has to, um, it, it can't be failing. And it's not, you know, I've heard all kinds of explanations about it. It seemed like maybe there was a disconnect between what the understanding was on, on your part of what we needed. And, um, and so that's why I was happy to this time be able to have, you know, the, the proposer, or the person doing the work actually come in and, and, and talk to us. Um, because there are certain things that are less important and certain things that are more important. We're not producing albums for singing. So if the quality there is a little bit um, slightly lower, that's fine. But we really need you know, reliability. And so I guess um, the fact that we already spent so much, we purchased things that were, I, my understanding is your recommendation or, and now those things are being deemed like the, you know, the problem. We've never had a problem with Zoom. When we live stream directly from Zoom, um, it's never once gone out. Um, so it's not the internet connection here. It's not, um, it's not any of those things. So I guess, yeah, that's my, mm. I'm, I'm really reticent to spend $35,000 on what sounds like a very similar plan to the $25,000 plan that, that hasn't worked out. You want, you want to comment on that uh, proposal of 20, whatever it was, what, what was purchased and what, what, and what, because I'm not, I remember that we did some work, but I remember the cameras, 
that we spent money on, some sound things we spent money on, but I don't remember us doing uh, a streaming, a streaming device. We did a streaming device as part of that. Yes. Yeah, and so to, to that point, to her. To a lot of that was this, I mean, we didn't, the streaming system we had at that point was completely broken. The camera controller and the cameras were dysfunctional, like they, they went black. So there was some urgency. So a lot was spent on cameras, the camera controller, and the microphone. So collecting the video in the room in order to be able to stream it out. And we're still gonna be able to reuse all of that. That's still part of this system. So we've made great headway into this already. It's not like- but We're not throwing anything away. No, the, we're upgrading the video switcher mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. accommodate multiple outputs. Mm -hmm. And we're upgrading the audio processor mm. in order to mitigate echo cancellation so that the Zoom participants can be integrated into the system so that people like Noah who are at home, instead of trying to hear us through the owl or through the computer, our voice being spoken into these microphones will be fed into the Zoom computer in the rack so that people from home will be hearing this quality of audio. And we here in this room will not be hearing Zoom through the owl, we will be hearing it through the new speakers that are going to be mounted on the wall and facing you so that the sound is controllable on the touch screen or an app here in your hands. Mm. If you need more volume from your Zoom participants, you can touch it and just like mm, go up. And if it's too loud, you can pull it down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought. This, right now, that, nobody's complaining on Zoom. So the people on Zoom are able to hear acceptably well right now. The people that were on YouTube watching, they had zero sound. And that's a really frequent occurrence where I get a text message from multiple people saying there's no sound on YouTube. There's a bunch of fiddling around back there that happens. Then we start a second stream directly from my computer and they, or they go to Zoom and they say, okay, now I can hear. It's not awesome, but I can hear. And then later on the town uploads something. So it just really concerns me that we're going to do something so complex. I'd love to be able to adjust everybody's volume with a touch screen, but when we're not, we're failing at the basic, like there's just no audio output to YouTube from the town system. Whereas my computer in Zoom is accomplishing that. Like, I just don't. Well, nobody's, I don't think anybody's debating that the current system is broken. This is it why we're trying to do it. We don't need that level of complexity where oh, it's like, I can hear Tom right now when he speaks. Mm -hmm. And we're using the owl, and that, that's not the major problem. It doesn't need to be this level of complexity. We, just, we need it to reliably work so that people can watch our meetings live and hear it. I, I just feel, to me, it sounds like we're failing at the basics and we're trying to go, $25,000 should have been able to get us like just consistently basic, you know, all of, the, all of the basketball games at the middle school are successfully live streamed from a kid with an iPad. I just... Yeah, but, uh, Noah, can you comment on, on this dialogue here? I'm, you're the expert. You, you've been involved in this. Uh, I'm getting a... I'm not sure if we're doing apples and oranges here or, you know, uh, because what we asked for is to change the system so, quote, it works. So it's, well, effectively dummy-proof. Uh, and including all the things you mentioned, Allison, the absolute concerns. Could you comment on, on the past work versus this work? Yeah, so, I mean, the original uh, scope of work is different than what we're trying to do now. So things have changed, um, you know, from the, when the original work was done to 2023. There's also been modifications to the system. You know, there's like a TV and some HDMI splitters and some other things, you know, modifications to the system that we didn't do. Um, we also, I don't remember the last time we were asked to come to the site for a service call. Um, so if there is a problem, we're happy to come and we're happy to work with you guys um, to resolve the issues, but we really need to be on site to, um, to, to fix, to, to troubleshoot issues and to fix the issues. Mm -hmm. um, so there is, there is a little bit of overlap between what was proposed then and what is, you know, in this proposal now, but one of the things was making it easier, especially for committees that want to show some, you know, a computer, say, on that TV over there. And, you know, the easiest way to make that happen, to turn on the system, to turn on audio, 
to turn on the TV, to make sure the TV's on the right channel, is to use a touch screen that gives you one button that does all of that at once. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to have a remote, you have to make sure the TV's on the right channel, you have to have, make sure that the video switcher's on the right thing, the, you know, the audio component um, is on the right, you know, the audio mixer is sending to the right yeah. uh, destination from the right source. All right. I, um, I, I know one of the objectives that was written, as I recall, was to make this um, as seamless as possible, and that does cost money, I understand that. Uh, to, if you don't make it seamless, then we have what we have. Um, and, I, and, a lot, and a lot of work has been done by, uh, and, uh, internally by Audra and company, Juniper, uh, uh, back when by um, uh, uh, Matt Siegel did a lot of work to get this, what we have set up now, and you, Allison, too. Um, but but I, what, what I'm trying to keep the focus on whether or not this is a good expenditure f to accomplish making this a professional conference room. Obviously, we all agree we don't want wires going across the room and all that kind of, that's, that was just temporary anyway. But, but um, uh, and that's what this, I believe this proposal represents. I don't pretend to be an expert, but when I, when I read into it, I see a, a system that is professional, that it, it is, um, well, as seamless as it can be, which is no such thing in reality when it comes to electronics, but um, um, I, I, I don't, um, I, 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 I've not How many designed. hours of Noah's time is included here? I mean, that's what I think there's the essential time. missing component is somebody, like over in Rockport, Jeff Parker is there like, you know, making sure and the, the person that designed the system is, yep. is listening in, is watching the, the live stream, is like, oh, I think I did something wrong here. I think I, you know, that's, there's, it's sort of inevitable that there's a certain amount of tinkering oh, sure. that happens. Sure. And I agree. the system where we have now is somebody from the public sends a text message to somebody that's hopefully going to notice, and then we're like, oh, shoot, it's not working. And, I mean, how, with you being far away, Noah, or how, like, how, how could we get the tech support that would be needed? I don't think we would have an expectation that Noah would be watching every time we go live. I didn't say that. But who is going to be doing that? We'd have to talk about uh, town staffing, I guess. Well, it, maybe that's what we need is more town staffing and not the, the equipment here actually can work, ex, you know, acceptably. It could be much better, but I just am I'm fearful of us improving things that don't need to be improved before we improve the basic fact that d nobody knows why the audio isn't working tonight on YouTube. No, I, I mean, I, shouldn't I, I, that be like you know, we spend twenty five thousand dollars and there's just no sound on YouTube? I don't understand. I, yeah, I, I, I think we can. I, I think what, I, what I'm looking for, from my perspective, is Noah turns to us and says, "What this expenditure is going to do is the following, and is that worth it or not?" If we keep going over history and history to make, uh, I, I, I don't see that as being personal. Sure, but how do we? How how can we formulate? Yeah. Um, I am well, not saying that I can't move forward it's that what kind of a is there some kind of performance standard that could be you know after a certain yes. amount of time it needs it it's evaluated is it working as it was intended yes to be yes. i want to know what to address that no this is your business you get i'm sure you get this all the time and it's a good question i agree with allison you know we, we you are in portland um you are the heart of this, you know, this in uh, what's the what, what has worked in your from your perspective, whether it be on call service or, or, or you know, or, or you know, and, and or what's included in the current proposal in terms of labor to bring this thing up to a, it's not going to happen in day one. When you program the thing, somebody from us is going to sit down and say, no, it doesn't exactly we we want that to work and um, we can we can help with that. But how would you address that question? Yeah, I mean, right. So, like I said, since this is a custom program and we can show whatever we want and we can set it up however you want, it, things could, once you actually physically start using the system, things can change. And we're perfectly fine and happy to make those adjustments. Yeah, I think, you know, when, you know, if and when there's, especially if there's an issue, the sooner we're notified and the sooner we can get up there, you know, we can get up there pretty quick. We are, we are you know, in Portland. Uh, and you're in Camden, but that doesn't mean that we can't get up there, you know, in a, in a, in quick time. Um, you know, um, I think that having us on site, you know, in addition to 
um, you know, the initial commissioning of the system and any tweaks that have to happen after that. And that is included in the labor here in, a, in addition to a training session as well, orientation session that's included with all of our proposals. Um, but, you know, having us on site once every year, once every six months, whatever you want, we do self-service contracts too. Um, to kind of reset the system in spaces like this, sometimes what happens is things are tweaked, things are moved, um, you know, stuff like that, stuff beyond our control. You know, sometimes the systems are modified or whatever, and then you know, I can't guarantee if things are are you know, things are unplugged or um, or um, or moved or modified or added to or whatever that stuff will work. But if we're on site once a year, once every six months, however often you want. Um, to kind of reset the system to the known working state once we determine what that known working, you know, that, that, it's that state that satisfies your, your needs are, then we can just keep, re we can just reset that. We can say, okay, this has been added, this has been changed, this has been modified, we can just, we can reset it, and then, and well, then we're good to go. One of the so, things I'd like to see in the proposal as an idea is to that regard is, uh, you know, when this thing has been programmed to do A, B, and C, um, in the first meetings, meetings we have to have uh, your involvement or your company's involvement and in, in case we are it's always when you start riding the bike when you realize the chain is loose you know that kind of thing and you need you, you need to have some active involvement of of the consultant uh, on uh, to, so you as experts can see what you can see that needs to be bettered it made made, made more more functional I think is that is that included in your proposal? Um, typically, um, it isn't, but that's something we can t certainly talk about. Okay. Adding in or, or including. All right. What about a user guide? That was one of the things oh, that was missed. I think last time was idea. having a, you know, a, a user guide of all the obviously all the different pieces of equipment have their own manuals that you can look up, but something that's con simple. condensed for the, you know, you see at different conference rooms that you can rent, there's like a yeah, few yeah, pieces right. of paper that say, do this and do this and do this. Oh, shoot, I, think, I see Tom has I, his I hand think up. That, I think that's a great idea. We need, we, we're not, uh, we don't, we haven't had the benefit of having an operator for quite a while. We, you know, that's been a challenge for us, obviously, but um, for planning board, uh, for the two boards in particular, planning board and select board, it's important to have a relatively simple and understandable user manual that just says, you know, uh, the basic stuff. And, and uh, maybe a couple of people who are trained with that so that they can be locally, so they can be contacted if they have any questions about, uh, I did this and did this, what did I do wrong? Uh, those kind of things are just uh, assurances that we can make this thing operate correctly. I had also mentioned, um, you know, to uh, um, uh, uh, Tom Hedstrom, he, he has a background in some of this stuff, especially the physical construction part, and I think would like to take advantage of some of his skills just to monitor what's going on and how it's proceeding, if he has the time, the poor guy. Um, but um, uh, that's... He does have his hand up. Can you see that from... Oh, Tom, you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Hi, Noah. Um, so... For our present system, we have an HDMI input. I believe it's on the wall to my my lower right where I sit. Um, Correct. Uh, so you're proposing to add a second HDMI input on the opposite side of the room, room near the TV screen. Yes. And then you're going to permanently install some type of input device there. Uh, an input device? No, that would be just a bring your own device type of setup, a computer okay, so, or whatever. Okay, so you'd have to bring an iPad or something like that and hang it up or, or go into that HDMI there. Okay, and, and then from there, there would be some software that they would have to have to control the system? No, there would be a touch screen dedicated for that. This is kind of for like the committee setup type of a thing, a self-service. You know, we're just using this, the room we want to show a PowerPoint just for us locally around this table type of a thing. We need to play some some audio through the speaker system. Very simple uses of the space like that. Um, okay, so the, the touch screen is something that you're providing. And so people could come into the room and set it up the way they wanted to right off of that touch screen without even bringing in their own device. Correct. Okay. Um, if we wanted to use the HDMI port that we are presently using, I believe, 
um, we would just bring a court and bring that over to where we sit, the dais. Right, yes. Um, and that would probably, the way I'm imagining this, and once again, this is a, a commissioning kind of, a, a, a conversation that has, happens at the commissioning stage um, and the programming stage. Um, but that, H, that the HDMI port on the dais, which you currently have, would probably be controlled by the touch screen or only accessed by the touch screen in the back of the room in the tech area. So that would only be used for when you're using the dais and, and, and other configurations like that. Maybe you're using the projection screen. Um, but the uh, HDMI input near the TV is really meant for when you have a small gathering around that TV, you want to show something on the TV itself. Okay. The TV is wireless so, now. Works so, well. so, for instance, um, from my uh, laptop computer, I could hook into that existing HDMI system and control some more complex functions. From the, in the dais, or would we would be relying on someone in the back? Yeah, no, so they're right. No, you wouldn't be able to plug into the HDMI and control anything from your computer. It would be okay. this, the two touch screens would be controlling the system. One, okay. or the, one or the other, yep. Okay, and one again on the wall and one in the back. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Sophie, you had your hand up. Yeah. I, so I just have a, a question, and, and it's probably a stupid one, but did we trouble chat, trouble check? Did what? Troubleshoot. Did we troubleshoot the issue we're having now? And is upgrading the only solution? Um, I, I don't believe we've done a service call. We've been asked to do a service call on this. Um, and once again, this, this, the proposed system is, you know, or the, the current ask is different than the ask when we in, installed the initial system. So this is modifying it to meet your current needs, mm -hmm. which includes Zoom now, which wasn't a part of the original scope way back when. Um, so we have to change some of these components. That's why some of this stuff is being replaced because it needs additional functionality to work in kind of the Zoom function, which after the pandemic has become a thing, but this was installed before the pandemic when people weren't thinking about, you know, integrating remotely with folks. Uh, so Zoom is costing us $35,000. The integration. No. It never worked properly before. Our central issue has been intermittent outages of YouTube from the video streaming device. I mean, it's been a, I think on that one issue, at least Juniper and I sort of agree that that particular mm. device has been very problematic mm -hmm. um and i like what you're where you're going with this of i didn't realize that noah that that you hadn't really come and evaluated okay what are all the reasons that it would be it would be great to have you see okay this is what committee meetings are generally like this is what select board meetings are generally like these are the problems that we occasionally have and just an evaluation of what's going on. Well, in, in, but, 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 so sorry, because uh, Juniper motioned to me about my troubleshooting question that maybe she wants to oh, answer. Sure. Just wanted clarification about what needed to be troubleshot. I have no, don't ask me. I mean, I, I, the only, uh, what I do understand from this conversation is that when we use Zoom and YouTube together, we have no sound on YouTube. That's it wasn't the, even Zoom. So this all started before Zoom. Zoom actually um, improved. <laughs> yeah, because when we weren't doing this at all, and it was just all of it, we were 100% Zoom. We never had a single YouTube outage. And I was doing it from Wi-Fi on my computer on the third floor, and everybody else was. Mm -hmm. So it's not Zoom. It's Zoom. So it's YouTube that's creating. It's that streaming device that takes all the information that, and then the maybe a combination of the switcher and the... I'm sorry, we, yeah. They don't seem to know. I we haven't used it for quite a while. What's that? That device. Which device? The video. video. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what but, I thought. I mean, we just gave... That was, that was part of the original well, plan that was going to... So, so, no, but I'm... So, basically, and, and... Look, I get lost using my own computer in my Finder drive, so I'm, I'm the least tech person around. But, but maybe... 
um, I mean, I, I feel a little bit like Alison, like spending $35,000 after having spent $25,000, $60,000 in the span of three years. So I'm, I'm, I'm not even done being on the board. It, it was more than three years ago. It was almost six now. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. When, uh, when, it was a long time When ago. Matt Siegel was there? Ago. We did. Oh. need a service. I didn't realize that no service so, so, call so what, happened. Uh, I mean, you, but so, you've got to decide, basically, you've got to decide as well two things. One is, is doing a... a uh, that there's some fundamental problems we have with this room, period. Not the least of which he's mentioned speakers, sound for the audience, a video for the audience, um, sound for us. All of the sound for all of what we speak to, whether it be YouTube, Zoom, et cetera, goes through this. It doesn't now. That's what all of this is, an integration of these, these components that are going to accomplish that. If we don't want that, you're right. Don't spend the $35,000. Don't do nothing and just keep it the way it is. So, but I'm, okay. So I think number one, I think, uh, Noah, you need to come here. I, I, it, to me, it, I think it's really critical that you come here and, and see what we have, what's, what's the equipment we have. I completely trust Jennifer and she, she's giving you the inf correct information, but I do think that, that doing that remotely is a bit problematic, right? So, so I, I think it would be cool. Second of all, I think we need to be very clear that what our goals are. So if our goal is to be able to streamline on, on YouTube using Zoom and uh, different audio, then we need to spell it out very clearly. That's been done. But it doesn't work. But it do, yeah, it doesn't. So, it's, we've never had a good understanding been, of what. Been, it's been done and it's been communicated with Noah okay. from what I understand. I'm not talking about it hasn't been done in this room. No, it hasn't. That's correct. You're absolutely correct. But seeing what the committee meetings are like and what, because there's a lot that's working just fine now. I have a historic resources committee meeting. We, we, I, I mirror my computer screen to that, and we have Zoom, and that, that so works I just fine. That's, that's part of what we're saying is that you can do that. Yeah. But that the other 99% of people do cannot do, do that. I can't oh, do no, it. that's no, not. I the, would really like, love to see um, just a. So I am part of a group that did a integration kind of like this. All of our speaking that we do on Zoom and everything goes through okay. the microphones directly into the system that everybody hears. And we spent, I don't know, just under 15000 for a very small. Mm -hmm. So I don't think $35 is, I mean, 35000 is a huge ask especially since it is integrating what we already have. But I'm not 100% sure without seeing it what that 35,000 is extra. Like, I understand that you're saying that we're going to need the touch screens. Mm -hmm. But if we're already, are we getting new cameras? Is that what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use the cameras we already have, the microphones we already have. Yeah. So it's the back office. The, it's yeah. the equipment with the dog. Everything is. kind of plugs into just dumbing it down here. Yep. Everything's going to plug into this little brain, and that is the. Brains, yeah. and, and we'll be able to. Stephanie can show something on the screen. I can show something on the screen. We don't have to go through Allison. Right. Because right now she's the only one who can. That's, that's actually not true. It's the YouTubing part is difficult, but, but other people. Anybody, I, I watch them do it all the time. They come in here, they turn on that TV, mm -hmm. and they mirror their computer screen mm -hmm. to that TV wirelessly. Cool. Very, that part of it works very well. It's just the Probably. YouTube going out unexpectedly. Okay. Well, so, so the next step is to have Noah come here? Do we want Noah? Yes, or? I agree with that. To do what? Well, let me ask Noah. What, is what, there a value in you here, coming up If yeah. you came here and did whatever uh, you do feel that you need that and that's a really core question do you need that to 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 uh underline confirm your proposal is accurate is that is that is that a correct statement for you i want to put words in your mouth but i'm looking at you because i think you do know what's here i think you do know what there are problems now you may not know the specific problem that's causing our youtube sound thing i don't know but what what how do you respond to that noah well there's there's a dish so it wouldn't change, coming to the site might help w help solve some of the current problems, but it wouldn't change my proposal. Yeah, that's but, but there's been modifications to the, okay. to the system in the space that we didn't do. And that, you know, so we're adding other variables as we go over the course right. of the past, you know, since we initially yep. installed the system, right. which is why it's hard for me to, 
you know, okay. what, that, I mean, that, it can help solve the problem with the existing system, but this exist this additional functionality that was asked, it wouldn't change the what I would propose. That's that's what I wanted to hear. So, so, um, I, I just wanted uh, Tom. Did you want to make any comments on this? You, I know you have, you already made some. Do you have any more comments you want to make? Uh, yes, uh, I I think the last comment I wanted to make is if we do go for this, and I'm I'm struggling to uh, navigate between the meeting and the um, agenda. So you may not see me now. I don't know, but um, no, we do. Is uh, we're going to need some assistance with training and initialization, um, and I just wanted to ask Noah uh, how he envisions that happening if we do go for this system. Yeah, a training and orientation session is included with the proposal, okay. and that and how that happens and who's involved can be discussed. You know, uh, uh, when once the system is installed and up and running. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't have any issue with, you know, having Noah come here. I'd love him to do it. It's if to fix nothing else to fix what we have right. now. No, no, but get, but, get, but, but, but to confirm, but he's already stated, and that's what I thought, that the equipment, these, they're at, of the proposal of 35,000, I'm guessing about 6,000 of that is labor and the rest is all equipment, right? Yeah. Probably in that order of magnitude, it has to be. Um, this equipment ain't, is, is long lead time, by the way, typically, yeah. and, and it's, it's expensive. But it... it, it, it uh, what my concern is it just in integrates everything so a complete dolt like myself can come in and not have a real challenge in turning the system on or and, and we have 90 percent assurance that this is going to happen 99 percent of the time uh -huh. that that's where i'm coming from because i think this the sound has been it, it isn't just youtube it's being able to communicate with better more effectively with the audience so they can hear everything from the outside world, uh, Zoom, et cetera, clearly, accurately. We, we've complained about the speaker that was here, that used to work, and I don't even know what, what goes on with that. It used to project our voices from the dais yeah. into, the, into the audience. It's not it even, it, it's not, it still does, but we, yeah. you know what, it's not consistent because we don't set it up, too. Um, it's, it's, it can always take an operator. Uh, uh, okay, no, 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 it, this system will take less of an operator. Or not, but we could be able to turn it. I, I understand. If, I think the only reason we would want an operator, Allison, is because we want to we want to play games with the with the with the uh, TVs, uh, monitors, the uh, cameras. Know. When we had that, those speakers working, you were bothered by the sound of your voice being too loud, and we my ended point, up adjusting my, it. So. My point. My point is this. I, I I'm betting the farm. This will consolidate all of this, so it becomes a, a professional conference room. Uh, as, as we originally intended, we were on that road when you know you and Matt were. Everybody was helping. Also, as a select board member, we, we need to be concentrating on meetings, not on electronics. And uh, I but, absolutely but, but agree but, with that. I, this but, is why no, I get frustrated because I don't want to be doing this. But I do you, it only when there are a bunch of complaints, and then somebody says, and then I do it. Not complaining, I also without you, we'd be dead in the water. So don't take <laughs> no. it as a criticism. But that has to go away. And I believe this proposal does that. Yeah, I don't want to spend thirty-five thousand dollars either. But you know what? I don't think you're going to get away with anything less to do it right. And but, that's, that's a decision you have to make. Do you want to bring this into the 20th century, or not? Never mind the 21st. But how, what are we, how can we make sure it works? Like, could there be a period where we say, okay, we're going through this period where it's the commissioning, where everybody decides, yep. you know, those yep. little details, and then there's the, the, the send-off or the handover where it's, it's, ours. it's determined, that comes back to the select board, okay, it's complete. Somehow where we get to say, okay, it's basically doing what... Because that it oh, seemed to be this continuous thing before, where it was like I, this. I agree. Okay. I agree. No, I think there could be uh, in in the commissioning session. By the way, when when it's all tweaked and put together, we could have a little workshop here with the select board. Can we not? Can we just like keep? Like I feel like you need to make a decision and then cut ties and just let us work with Noah to do this. I, I agree. Okay, so the the fundamental thing I agree. The commissioning needs to be done well. I think we should consider. Uh, um, but I guess, like, what I'm saying is the more you micromanage this, yeah, I, the more it's yours and the more it'll continue think, to be yours going forward. I, I agree with so you completely. So this is like a good cutting off point where you make a decision on whether or not we do it and then... I agree. I, I totally but agree. that is exactly what happened last time, where we were told that you just need to go with a staff recommendation and you need to... And that's what we did. So are we going to micromanage us out of this problem? I don't. We just I don't handed think it that over. That's going no, to be the it's solution. just like a performance bond. Like when a, a project gets done, like Siemens, and there's something at the end that says, "Okay, it's complete." It's not micromanaging the whole thing. No, but I think. I mean, 
I think we, we've, we need to just stop this conversation, right? Yes. I, I think your concerns I've, I've heard. Everybody share their concerns. I think Noah, Juniper, understands what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we should proceed to a vote mm -hmm. and, and decide whether we want to, well, the issue is that we don't have a budget, so, but, but we, we have. We don't have the actual proposal with the final um, No, but so we can move. Amount. You just we, put not to exceed number, right? Yeah. I would That's rather all. have something in front of me to look at. Well, the proposal is in front of you. It's a um, question of if we're going to allocate a certain amount of money, not to exceed if you want, to, to getting this thing done. Because the most important thing is if you want to get this done, the, I know I can comment on that the lead time for equipment is long. I, I, you don't buy this stuff off the rack. It's probably going to take months. And we, we have a lot, the staff has a lot of time to make this thing effective. It's not going to be cheaper than 35000 No, but you, you probably have seen a pro forma with, he sent you something with numbers, yeah, I sent right? It to You're Janice. not seeing. I so, sent it to Janice and Audra. They have it. And Bob oh. has it. I did see something, but mm. it, I thought When it we was... met before, I had that for you. Yeah, I think it was just a miscommunication about I don't, what got I the narrative. I expected that proposal. that was going to come, oh, that I, you guys guess, had that but all it, today. From, but the, was it a, was it a not, to, not to exceed price? Or, or a, it was a an itemized. It was but, a, but, but is it a total dollar fixed price on this, Noah, for the 35000 mm, It. Mm, uh, Roughly, but once again, some some of the items in the proposal have been purchased already out, you know, by Matt or Juniper. So some of this would be revised. It would the price would be probably a little lower. All right. But, so yeah, if we would, if we would say it not to exceed thirty five, it, it's yes. probably going to come in lower. Yep. We, we do this all the time, Stephanie, because we don't always have. I didn't realize we had some equipment that we had already done. I didn't realize that. Or oh, we have a computer that's already here. I, I, didn't, I didn't get into the detail in any of the pricing part, but that, that seems to make sense. It, it, but fundamentally, it, it's, it's not going to change by more than $1,000 or $2,000 down. That's all. Maybe. Because a computer is 1000 I mean, The issue is I'm completely unqualified to assess what equipment is on the pro forma and exactly. the price for it. So, exactly. so I do understand it. I mean, yeah. for, from a procedural standpoint, it's, it's better yeah. if we have something in front of us. Uh, but I, um, agree with you. I just and, thought that we were going to see more of a contract sort of thing, exactly. not an outline of what was being offered. Well, when you, when you um, have a proposal from any entity, you're approving the proposal. Right, but we don't see the proposal. I didn't we realize that that wasn't sent. What is being asked Janice for? Not an actual proposal, though. We also, you know, we do have a purchasing policy, and I understand that that sounds a little bit myopic sometimes. Mm -hmm. But there is a process for determining whether it warrants going outside of that policy. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, determining what the funding source would be. Right. I. Um, can can move past my negativity from the the past, um, but I would like to see you know some just something that's different, some num numbers and it just. Well, I, I want to suggest rather than beating this thing on and on to your point, Stephanie. Too, what we can do is we can, if what the board wants to, we can approve the scope, uh, and so that we can be awarding the contract to Stone Mountain and the verification of the not to exceed thirty five thousand. Paperwork will be in the 21st packet. Mm -hmm. The paperwork and the contract, especially the service. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, th I, th yeah. I think there's, yeah. and the training yeah. and a, co a couple of leaflets so that we can have people, you know, use can, it here. Can we get some of that backup information, Noah, by the 21st meeting? I, it's already all in that. Is it? Well, we would, we'd have we, to write we up adjust an, it. an agreement, we will but make that's up, yep. fine. But it do does that. itemize yeah, that it, training it, is included. You know, it may be and silly, but... That's really know. all I wanted to see, no, which is kind of like what was being offered with the equipment, because, I mean, I am no. not 100% yeah. on this either, but just to know what we were being offered in that was really all I was right. hoping to see. And, and I think we can, we, we can condition our approval on that. We can't why couldn't can we just wait and vote on it next time? We can, but uh, you know, every every time we every time we delay something, it takes longer to get it done. And we we really want to get it. We, there's equipment that's going to be bought, and it ha and its lead time is long. Why not take advantage of that and get at least that part moving while we're 
Well, we're, getting, we're relying on a, uh, on a consultant that's giving us the right equipment for the job. And I, by the way, I couldn't judge whether it's correct equipment or not. I'm not an expert. And, and get that part moving while we're confirming the, the contract and the, uh, the paperwork that goes along with the, I agree, with the commissioning and all those other pieces, if we can get that as a condition to our approval. Because it, nothing's going to change. We, we do this all the time, and nothing changes between the discussion tonight and discussion two weeks from tonight. I just don't have a good answer for somebody that asks me why wasn't there an RFP? Why why did we go with you know a sole it, it's the same source? It's the same reason we do with every technical engineering company that we do proposals for. We don't. What's the funding don't. source here? Contingency. It's contingency. Is this system? Can you point to anywhere else that has something similar? That's working. I don't understand the question. Uh, is there Wait, another another um, organization or municipality or mm -hmm. conference room anywhere that you could say it's a, roughly similar to this? Is that no, a question for Noah? I can send Noah? you a list. Yeah. I generally don't provide um, names, and mm -hmm. I do have uh, you know um, some references that I can send you, but I need to make sure before I say anything that I've asked them. Even if it's not something that you designed, just similar no, you, similar equipment being used. I think references is a logical thing to ask for. That's um, the company, like, they do it all the time. Like we are trying to implement credit cards at the transfer station, for instance, and there was this mm -hmm, complex mm -hmm. system and mm -hmm, they did mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. and then when we finally realized there were no other transfer stations that it was working at, and then this other much more simple system was able to say, Cumberland, all these different places. And, um, but you know, I, I don't know, it'd just be easier to. But so if we give a, a conditional approval tonight, uh, Noah, you would still not start purchasing anything until you had a signed contract. Correct. Correct. But and so, so we could give a conditional approval yeah. to move forward a packet and yeah. circulate it to us for, you know, and make sure that, so that we're not wasting time. Yep. But Noah is not going to call us and say, guys, you didn't, you, you, you decide to refuse the contract, right. but I purchased stuff. You're not going to buy anything until you have a signed contract. Right. But we can generate, that's what we need, that's what we need to get moving, the contract to get. So we, we it, can, we, so we can make a motion to yep. move forward with the contracting process by circulating to the select board all the documents you, that, yeah. that, that have been provided yeah. to NOAA and uh, yeah. with the conditional approval not to spend more than 35. Not to exceed. Not to exceed $35,000 yeah. to yeah. upgrade yeah. the yeah. conference room. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that, Sophie, because good point. We want to get moving with picking the vendor with the concept that's been presented or not. You know, if you don't, if you like it the way it is, then vote for the way it is. But, um, you know, I'm, no, I'm, that's I'm not serious. what we're saying at all, Bob. We're just saying that we're so the proposal would be we're going to say we conditionally approve to work look at the contract later up to a certain amount of money. Yep. Yep. for this scope of work. So we're not really approving anything. We're no. just saying well, we're, we're going to be looking at the paperwork to approve it on the 21st. You're, you're, you're approving the, the scope of work scope and of you're work. asking in the price and you're asking me to go back and negotiate a contract with NOAA, right. particularly focusing on the, the labor, the support. Commissioning. The training. Just all, yeah, all okay. the training yeah. Yeah. and yeah. That's what he's already that done. Would, that's he's, what will yeah, go in front of you for that, approval. That's what would be, that's I feel what much be. better knowing it quite that simple. <laughs> I was still trying to put it all together, and I'm just like, this is not so making any sense. There won't be any more conversations about microphones or audio mixers right, or right, right, cameras right. or anything right. like that. That's that's the fun. That's the core. The core of it is the direction for the conference room, right. and, and to do the paperwork and not to exceed thirty five thousand. Right. Oh, I thought Noah said that in the what was it the fa there's a phase that was going to happen where. Commissioning. Oh, commissioning, where details get worked out, yep. where, so it did seem like at that phase there would be, I, I'm not clear, I guess, on what, you said several times during the presentation, this would still be decided. At the commissioning phase. At the commi oh, was it yeah. the commissioning phase, or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. how would that, I, I think mostly what's important 
to me, it's just making sure that Can it I address that? includes just the committees. Like it includes. Well, we got to be careful how many cooks we have in this. But but it includes monitoring what actually happens. I clarify that that yeah. that happens in programming. So in during the installation, they work with the programming to create these. Yeah tools on yeah. the touch screen so yeah. we can decide it's not going to change the scope of the contract mm -hmm. it's not going to change the item that's being purchased but it's at the installation point right when we say we want this but we don't want this we after we install it we can be like oh sorry we actually didn't want this but we did want this control mm -hmm. on that so it's not something that gets fixed in the contract the commissioning right. of what happens on those touch screens it's, that's it's, what he's referring to it, it, it has no effect on Right. You're tweaking contract. the touch screens to do what we want them to do. Is, is there going to be a room microphone so that, like, are we going to still be restricted to these eight microphones? Yeah, we're not changing the microphones. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the big problems. We need more, actually. Like, <laughs> well, that's a problem because that, that thing only will handle eight. No, but, but there are other conference rooms that have um, conference microphones that can be used where it might not be the most amazing quality in the world, but it does a reasonable job of picking up the ambient sound in the room when, so that not every, I mean, for example, when the budget committee meets, um, that's a big problem generally when, because there are, anytime there are more than eight mm. people. I guess are well, we designing a church for Easter Sunday or for like the normal Sunday. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Is that exactly. No, but, but, but look, Audra, if Tom and Bill are here, one of us has to share a mic. So right here, well, and, and that's we're not, not. No, we're because we're not going to have to mic it. You're gaining one. Well, mic deal. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Fine. No, that's yeah. a, that is I mean, an issue. The owl does pick up things, and it does a job that's so I think, acceptable. Okay. So I think at this stage, it might be useful. I'm going to make a proposal um, that we do approve that we move forward with the the contracting process mm -hmm. that we're going to leave Audra and Jennifer to do that. Jennifer, you're involved in a Audra group? would probably be. Audra, you're doing that. I'm just asking. I'm not, I'm not telling. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with Noah, not to exceed $35,000 coming from the contingency fund. Yep. And we want to see a contract with a training plan, a support plan, training support material. Commissioning session, maybe one or two. I don't know, Noah, you know, I have more experience than we do in that sure. matter. So we can fine tune the usage of this room. Um, I think uh, if anybody else has concern that they want to uh, see in the proposal, maybe they can share it with Audra by email. But I, I just, I, I, I'm not sure we're making any progress, and I think we need to move on from oh, yeah, this topic. I agree. <laughs> Motion made and second. Further discussion? All those in favor? One, two, three. Uh, Tom, yes. I see your hand up. No. Aye. Aye. No. You raise your hand. No, I did not raise my hand. We won't raise your hand. No. Oh, I, I normally we say all those opposed. All those opposed. Four to one. Thank you very much, Thank Noah. You. Thanks for the time. Thank, Thank you, Jim. I'm sorry. Um, and let's, Thank you, Noah. Let's, Thank you, Audra. Let's, let's move on to our next item, which is the um, approval of the Hawk, Hawking and Pedder license for Mark Bradstreet for selling live lobsters in the public landing. Uh, I think, Mark, you want to, might as well participate. Um, if you recall, board, we had discussed this at the meeting a couple of meetings ago. I think it was two meetings before ago. Christmas. Uh, was it? Yeah. Okay, it was before Christmas. Uh, and we had, had, we had made a number of concerns at that meeting, as well as a concern about uh, um, we had some kind of a station we were contemplating for this sale on the landing area, which is near the fisherman's lift, in my mind. And, and uh, that's where we had left it and to uh, carry it forward to uh, uh, this discussion. So uh, good evening. Mark Bradstreet, local lobsterman, here to clarify or answer any questions you have. I've provided information to Audra and Janice, and that's over the last two months. Uh, in email. They consist of photos and sketches. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Questions, comments, board? Sketches and photos over the last two months. Um, I saw in the, in the packet. In the packet. It's hard on the PDF. Yeah, I know. So I th Excuse me. 
was a was a photograph of a like a more of a shack than what we talked about. Sophie, like so I see, is this of is what is this in? That was added today, and that's an art artist sketch of what the actual lobster stand would look like. So in the packet, I saw more of a building. In the what, Allison? In the packet. Yeah. The initial letter written over four or five months ago to Steve Pixley had a picture of a wooden shack that said lobsters on it. Yeah. It was only to give you a rough idea. I think that's in the. I think that's in the packet. I think that, we have that. That is in the packet, but I as we've moved forward. Thirty-two. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Yeah. I guess. Sorry, I didn't realize there had been so much back and forth, um, like so much discussion and had gone on and the Me either. the first I ever heard of it was you know when it was came to our meeting right last De time December so. December 17th right so right. um I apologize for if that's sounds, okay it sounds like you've been doing a bunch of back and forth work with town staff and there I are new realize. pictures in there and if you haven't seen the pictures no, it's easy Sophie you. asked for the pictures I did. She did. that's why you have the pictures yep yeah okay. understood I appreciate it yeah so, and, and I'm sorry, Mark, I'm scrolling. I have downloaded the PDF. I'm scrolling. Page, page 32. Yeah. Because page 32. They're awfully big pictures of mine, at least. But uh, while they're doing, so, so, go ahead. So there's a, there's a fold-up table. There's a picture with a white fold-up table and a lobster crate. And that's what it's going to look like with a panel above it saying lobster. With that, it's this kind of like this. Like a small red building. Yeah. I don't see a small red building. Here I do. Oh. You have to keep going up. Oh. Oh. 32. Keep going up. No, Page 32. Up. Sophie's having navigation problems. Well, I'm having problems because oh, I see those. this. <laughs> that's the red building. But that's not what you're building. You're not building what the picture a shed. that says a right. shack with lobsters open. No. Audra, do you want to handle this or should I? <laughs> <laughs> there were qualifiers on the photos, and it distinctly said this is not the final product. Right. This is to answer Sophie's question, where is the location? Yeah. There was a follow-up photo. I placed the lobster trap exactly where it's going to be. And I see that. Page 35. I see that. With the white folding table and the, the winch is on yeah. the left-hand side when you look at the parking lot. Okay. And there's one more photo, if you keep scrolling down, yeah. that has a single lobster trap. There should have been text under that that I gave to Janice that said this is the exact location and if you remember on December 17th I said it was four feet by four feet yep the white table you see is six feet wide right. so it'll be smaller than the white table oh oh kind of kind of kind of the size of the trap very compact okay. if you need dimensions I'm giving you exact dimensions four feet wide three feet deep it's eight about feet, eight one feet high. Half of the width of a nine foot parking stall. Half the width. It's about half the width. Can we see the numbers? Uh, okay. So, Stephanie, do you want to see that? Yes. You're good. Right, thank you, Mark. You're welcome. I'm pretty good with the concept that's being. Okay. And, and I had an, uh, an additional question. Live lobsters don't need to be refrigerated. There's no health and safety issue. Because mm -hmm. what my understanding is, if you, if you sell them live from the boat, that's fine. But is there? Because at one point you also said there would be a cooler, a refrigeration issue. Do you need to be licensed by the state of Maine for health or safe food handling? Yeah, or? his license is in there. It's page thirty. I'm I'm licensed as a lobsterman to sell lobsters. Right. It would work against me to sell dead lobsters. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> If, if I ever sold a dead lobster, I lose a customer. Oh, more, I lose more than that. Uh, I think the question is, is when you say cooler, it, is this a, like a, a, a Yeti cooler kind of thing that's not refrigerated? It's the, not coo the coolers could be sold to people that are traveling, oh. and they take the lobsters with them. Oh. The cooler I was talking to you about was actually the table. It would look a lot like an old Coca-Cola chest freezer yep. okay. or cooler. Okay. You could open it from the top. You can put uh, crates of lobsters in it, right. and you can pick from that. It may or may not be plugged in. If you don't want to handle electrical, I'll deal with ice. 
if Tom, as Tom suggested, I could have a meter, and then I would pay the town for the electricity. Yeah, I'm not worried about the meter part, tell you the truth, but um, okay, well, I think the, the major question had been the physical, but I, I still have, and, and, and it keeps biting me in the back of the head, and it's nothing to do with you, Mark. It has to do with the landing. Um, you know, for a long time, we've, um, I and many others have commented about the issue we have with and have had with the uh, hot, uh, commercial um, uh, tables uh, for the day sailors and others that we, by, by agreement, we still have. It's always been a source of, of frustration. It's a wrestling between one, uh, you know, people using the landing, which is not huge, and, and not making any, any kind of a, and I, I can't think of another word, but an a, a, a arcade, and that's a childhood thing for me because I remember Nantasket Beach in, mm. Nanta in Hull, Massachusetts. There was an arcade and had all kinds of hawkers on there. And that's always been a, res a, a, res a resistance to that, but that's just one thing. The other thing is, and probably larger for me, is the, is the um, what we do for one, I mentioned this last time, what we do for one, we got to do for all. That scares the heck out of me. It really does because um, you are and will be successful. And uh, it would take a fool not to see that. And if I'm one of your cohorts, I'm going to want to do the same thing. And, and, that's, and, and I would be, in my seat here, I would be reticent, if not handcuffed, to say n uh, yes to anybody else that came in. But we have to be fair. Th that, that, that still lingers in, in my chronic. Yeah, I still have heart. It's just made me speaking. I have heartburn with that. Um, it, by the way, and I, it's our bad. It's our bad because we've had other people come approach us with ideas about fun things to do down at the landing, and uh, we kept saying, "Well, we need to we need to get a handle on the on the vision, if you want to call it, of the landing." We've never done it because of good reasons, by the way. The town is busy as heck. We've got other priorities. We've got other blah blah blah, and it's a mega project to and and the landing has been investigated more times than Carter's Little Liverpools. You know, over, over the decades, by the way, I've seen so many proposals and ideas about the landing that were done by very professional architectural firms. We've never done anything with it. So I just want to, I want to preface because it's not about you. Yeah, I understand, understand some of the history and I appreciate your position. Yeah, well, thank you. But that's just... I, I do have two thoughts yes, that sir. might help you, might help the board. Yep. Uh, number one, I don't like the label hawking and peddling. But <laughs> Nobody does. But our own kind go to Augusta and Portland and say we're peddling. So we're kind of downgrading. We're really not hawking and peddling. Oh, I know, we're I not going to badger people into buying lobsters. <laughs> it's the, it's the it's title so of our terrible. license. It's, it's the like title of our license. Stuck in this order. Very right. It's like a relic of the you know 19th yeah. century. Yeah. So <laughs> I make town I'm, vote to change you know, it. You know, it's not my native language, so I had to look it up to understand what it meant. So, like, so, it's like vitulers yeah. license. You explained yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a French word. Vittles anymore. But this no, one but has like negative, like Vittler license, does. we don't even know what that word means, but, but word. I can hawking tell you means. we've heard of. Um. Yeah, hawking Make is. a motion to call us vendors, just something neutral. It takes actually a town vote. The problem, that's why it's so slow. It takes a full town vote to change it. So yeah. if we could all change it tonight, I think we probably would. I think would. we probably would. Um. Yeah, one thought I had, you could uh, uh, really quickly streamline your process. I think if you tied the fisherman's float permit, and fisherman's dock permit, you tied a hawkers and peddlers license option to that, and that each stall that we park in can serve as a hawking and peddling. If, if you wanted to make it really streamlined, I go in to pay my thousand or twelve hundred dollars. Oh, let's add fifty dollars and get a vendor's license. I could sell out of the back of my truck. Mm -hmm. That's what our industry is going to. They're going to parking lots in Walmart and Augusta and Skowhegan. Yeah, We're true. trying to get a better price so we That's can stay true. in business. That's true. Well, right in Rockport. And Rockport, right absolutely. At, right down by the... We're, we're having a middleman crisis in the lobster industry. Oh, I don't doubt. I understand. It's, it's, it's a real conundrum. It's a real issue. I, we get it. Actually, but like I said, I, just, uh, I, have, I have the fear that this is going to um, be one step in the wrong, maybe one step in the wrong direction for the, the landing in terms of its use uh, uh, and, and, and further impeding and otherwise making individuals who want to go there for the joy of the harbor uncomfortable. And, and not that you would do anything 
personally. You wouldn't be standing with a loudspeaker saying, buy my lobsters or I'll shoot you. <laughs> I, I get that. It's, it's not, this is not personal. Please understand that, Mark. When the tour guide with the walking tour and his microphone goes by, he often encourages me to do some kind of a lobster thing because he wants to showcase <laughs> sure. the harbor. Sure. So we work well together now. It's just that I, I get it. I, I don't have a right. a legal footprint if yeah. that's the, if yeah, that's yeah. such a thing. Yeah. yeah but if you give me a try, I think I can, I think I can bring the fishing waterfront alive at Camden even more than it is now. Oh. Possibly. So I guess I I want to make sure I understand because I see what you do now and I don't have a problem. With that, I'm not 100% certain what is legally needed in order to be able to do that. I think by being a, a lobster, you already have the right to sell the lobsters from the boat, from, you know, all of that isn't anything you need from us. Right? Is that accurate? The quick and simple distinction is everything now is built on my truck. Oh. My sign is on my truck. Oh. Yeah. That's why I, you never saw me go through signage. Oh, I it's mean, on the truck. Yeah. Who wants yeah. to? I mean, I've seen it. It's a big sign. It's on the no. truck. People right. come. As they long as go down to the boat when they want to. They chat with you. They, um, and I'm okay. I'm so, okay with so that. So I'm officially not on town property. Right. Right. I'm asking to be on town property. I get it. Okay. So I think. Yeah. I mean, for I think for me, it's the same as. Um, for Bob, a, a little bit that we do get lots of requests, and we've a, and I, I mean I've gotten an earful from a, a couple others in a similar industry to yours, um, or the same one that the you know the idea of theoretically wanting to do something like this, and you know how much space is there really for for structures. Um, so I, I see that as an issue because if we there literally just isn't enough room to say yes to everybody taking up permanent real estate there. But um, I think the major thing for me right now is is just the state of the boardwalk, the state of the public oh, yeah. landing. It's, it's um, after the last storm, it was just ravaged. Mm. Basically, there's conduit that is have been ripped down that's hanging that's there are you know ex extension cords they're missing boards there are pilings that have been split there's sinkholes there it's it just it's we got a lot of complaints about it last year and this of course is none of this is is your fault but to to me when people ask me about you know what's the plan for fixing this and i don't know what the like temporary plan is just to get that oh, kind no. of functional for summer and oh, no. I think it's one of those cases of we ha we need to take care of our own house and, and you know clean up what we have before we put more things there if that I mean that would have been clear very much in the path of the f of the flood in December had it been there and we had a lot of junk there too that probably should have been moved out of the way so I guess I just feel like we need to clean up our act a little bit before we add to the, to the, to the pile. Um, I, ironically, you've outlined one of the reasons why I want to be in the parking lot. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to get to my boat. Yep. Yep. And that last storm was proof enough when the high tides. No, I couldn't get to my boat. I wouldn't either. Because of. Because the, of the gangway the lifted. Gangway. Yep. Right, right. And offset. Yeah, yeah. It's so dangerous. I had to get to a ladder, and if you ever tried to carry your lunch, and everything else you have and walk down the ladder that has a, that carried, has ice on it. Oh, I've carried a lot of things down that ladder and it's very terrifying depending on the amount of ice or slime or yeah. So oh, the yeah. park the parking lot is safer for me and my customers and I yeah. think for the town of Camden you are on my insurance policy. So that's one of the things you asked me to do. You do bring the lobsters up to I people mean, though. I I think I I mean I I personally I'm going to say something very controversial here, and I, I, I realize this, but I think you know we have the most valuable part of the town is a parking lot. It's completely ridiculous that we don't take more advantage to uh, make it more easily accessible to businesses. Uh, parking lot is a parking lot. We should have something much better downtown. So my opinion and, and the way I'm, I'm looking at what 
Mark is pro proposing is, number one, we could do that on a temporary basis. And that would give us an idea of who else wants to come and do business on the landing. I can tell and you you're going to get another one at the next meeting. Sure. Absolutely. But, the, but, but, the but, but we, we've all, we also said at the December 17 meeting that we cannot stop making changes while we have a complete plan for the landing. Because th that makes no sense. Because we're not going to have a new plan for the landing for another, what, two, three years? Could be. Right. And, 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 and in the meantime, and in the meantime we're going to on a yearly basis, or you can yeah. revoke them whenever you, so I mean, it's, it's not, you don't have to look at this as sort of a permanent, permanent thing. thing. Other comments? But that's, but that's like Tom, I don't know if you can see that Tom has his hand up. Tom. Thank you. Um, so we, we asked Mark to define uh, the reason why we asked him to come back and we deferred to a, a later date the last time he came before us was because we wanted to look at the physical structure that he wanted to build uh, on the uh, landing. Uh, we weren't focused so much on the grand plan for the landing or um, anything else. I think we've, we've, we've done him a disservice by bringing him back. He's brought back the information that we've asked for, and now we're focusing on other things that could have or should have been brought up the first time he was here. Um, if we were going to uh, deny him at, you know, what he's asking for, for those reasons, we probably should have brought those up the first time. I understand there's some things that you can do upon reflection, and, and we're certainly within our rights to do that, but um, he has answered the questions that we've asked him to answer. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, you know, we should be encouraging commercial fishing in Camden Harbor. Um, this is an opportunity to show Mark and the other fishermen that uh, we support them in our harbor. Um, it's certainly a part of our heritage, our history here. And from what I understand, we've lost some of that. I think, it, I think having a good commercial fishing industry in Camden is also good for the tourism industry. I also want to point out that he's only asked for a one year yeah. um, trial on this. And if you do go for one year on this, um, it gives us a good idea about whether this is feasible or not. Um, if we do have other interest from other entities or fishermen mm -hmm. um, for the public landing, we'll have an opportunity to uh, adjust. Maybe, maybe someday this turns into a, a small fisherman's co-op or something of that nature where um, anybody who has commercial fishing licenses that, uh, running out of Camden Harbor has some opportunities for that space, and, and like Sophie says, maybe that space can expand. Maybe we lose a parking spot or two in the future and create something is, that's really great for our businesses, for our town, mm -hmm. again, in, in a historic industry mm -hmm. for Camden and the coast of Maine. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Stephanie. So I am 100% on board with commerce and a work and waterfront. To Allison's point, I am very concerned at the state of the entire area down there. Um, and in thinking of this, something just doesn't feel like we're caught up to this grand idea. It's a great idea. Just don't know if we're caught up to having people do this on the landing yet. Um, and I know for a fact that I have a couple other people that have come to me and said, you know, well, can I set up my table to sell my bracelets that I make? Mm -hmm. Can I, you know, sell my jewelry that I make there? And I'm like, well, put in an application. Who knows? You know, the sky's the limit. It's, it's, it is a great opportunity. Um, but I am, I, I am very concerned with the state of the, everything down there. My thought was um, a sign, a big sign that you could put up that is hung in a stable manner that says, if you do not feel something to the effect, if you don't feel comfortable coming down to the boat, call this number, we can come to you. 
or something like that. Um, that could also have it so that we could, anybody else that wanted to, you know, Bill, Joe, Schmo, wanted to add their little sign on there. Hey, call my number if you want to. Everybody kind of has their guy. And I think, um, you know, I got my guy. I got my guy for this and my guy for electricians and all of that. So I know the guy I call. So I feel like your guys, you would be the guy for your people. Um, that to me is more appealing at this point in the game, seeing as where we're at with everything down there, um, is to kind of think of a signage thing that might help you do what you're doing without adding more to the landing. That's just my thought process on it. Thank you for your thoughts. The de facto situation is just as you described. We're already doing that. Right. We've already done that. It, it works. It works. Um, the, difference, the difference is it's safer and it's better for the town, for the customer, and for the lobsterman to do what I'm proposing. So we all benefit. And no ill intent, but bracelets are very different than ic iconic Maine lobster. <laughs> uh, we represent a $500 million industry in the state. Um, I, I feel very passionately that we can bring good things to the waterfront in the form of lobster and a, a tourism and a visitor's experience, both with our stand and our education and the efforts we put forward. Mm -hmm. Um, I really do feel you're doing that. I mean, you, I agree with everything that you're saying, and I watch it with the, it is a tourist attraction. It is all of those things. It's, I think your presence there has added a lot to the, to the harbor, to the experience that, that people have. And I definitely want to continue to support that and find ways of expanding it and find ways of, I mean, we've got a whole elver fishery too that's about to, to start. I mean, that's just completely neglected by the town. It's like pandemonium down. It's you know, somewhat of a free-for-all, as, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot we could be doing to support the commercial fishery. Mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, yeah. I, it's a tough one. Um, 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 well, Mark, just give me one break because I have one person that wanted to speak from the public. Peter, did you want to say something? Oh. You just stand down for a minute, Mark. No, he's fine. He's fine. I, I, I think Mark brings up a great point, but you all at the board and our leadership in town have, have mentioned this two, three, four years ago. Uh, over and over, we don't have a plan. We need to come up with a plan. What's the long-term plan down there at the waterfront? Sophie brings up a great point that here the town owns a piece of property. It happens to have a little chamber of commerce, you know, unit in it. The town has not taken advantage of owning this piece of property right at the head of this ridiculous parking lot to take advantage of these kinds of at opportunities. It's it's. Here, here's a vendor who wants to go out, okay, so there may be some other ones who want to come in after him. Well, make him, make him pay the town if it's real successful. Make him, make him pay so that the next person who's interested goes, oh, this isn't going to be, a, it's, it's more than 25 bucks. It's going to be $2,000. Or explain to the town and explain to Mark what is the relationship with this Harbor Dogs? How long has that gone on? Where's the, where's the documentation with that, I mean, do we have a copy of that? What? What? Yeah, how long is a, that we have list? A license agreement. And and is it does it expire every year? It is a three-year agreement. So they get three years. It's and then, revocable though, because the select board is only allowed to commit to one year technically. So any future select board can. <laughs> so, so, the so, jammers. I agree but I guess, you. no, Peter's got a good point. And Jeepers, most, most places would carve out, like in Rockland, for example, they've got like three spots. They, exactly. they <laughs> reserve for vendors and they pay $3,000 a year. They have to bid on them. It's a whole. And, and, and this, leadership, this, this leadership statement of we, we, we can't do this, you know, it's just it's going to take forever. It's going to take forever. We have heard this and talked about it. We have plans. There's plans for this. Harbor Park, Harbor area, it, it, it talked about for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. We need to just make a decision. It's okay to make it temporary, a year. It's okay. 
If somebody gets upset, I'm sure you folks can handle it. <laughs> We're going to try. I mean, so I, ten, One ten years ago, um, the town voted on the downtown master plan. All the voters voted on that. And it said many things that the town was supposed to be doing, like fixing and creating certain sidewalks, investigating better uses of the public landing, implementing paid parking because of this incredible resource that we have that was felt to not be being well utilized. Um, those things are all difficult. Um, and the public landing, we started, we're doing a, a pilot paid parking program down there. That was a recommendation that all the voters agreed on and everybody just ignored it for 10 years, eight years, because it's really difficult to change things in Camden. So um, there's, a lot of that that's that's mm -hmm. happening and we are trying to move forward with some of the recommendations that the town has voted on but mm -hmm. just trying to figure out how much is how many of these things can you take on all at once is a thing that yeah, I think I we're not I'm not sure that's not sometimes. that's not more well, I think it's a it's a different conversation yeah, it's I mean a totally different conversation. I think so I think we need to address Mark's request exactly. I think he's we he's, we, we asked some questions he gave us some answers he did. i think it's probably time that we put this to a vote i, I mean because we can discuss well, some, some you know. kind of a proposal and, so and i i make a motion that we approve um, mark's uh what is it? what kind of license? Hawking and peddling. Hawking and peddling. I'm sorry, I apologize. Vendor's license. Well, it's a hawking and peddling license for one year as a temporary tryout to sell live lobster in a shack, according to the specifications that you shared with the select board. Can we further modify that Audra to restrict it to just one trial, one I contract think. only yeah. this year, and no other? It's already. Only it's already in there. It's one. Yeah. Which I mean, I, I mean for anybody else coming in and wanting to do the same thing next week. No, you can't because you're yeah. voting on his on license. His. If yeah. you want to, you're going to have to. People are, have the right to apply, yeah. but you have to make a decision on them, just like you're doing with Mark. You can't do like a blanket, blanket. ban of all of these. Okay, that's what I was asking. Okay, <laughs> you make the motion. I made the second? motion so we can discuss or second more. Let's move forward. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second to force it to a vote. What What were the specifications that I saw one, a bunch of different? Year, no, year. no, no, no. So he said, according to the specifications. Yeah, so so he, he gave us the he gave us the, the dimensions, size, size. the size, the place, the signage, the table. I mean, everything is in the packet. So ba basically, every. I guess I was confused by the diff so many different pictures. There is things, because we never closed on the electrical and non-electrical. Yeah, I I mean, so that I can't. Okay, so just. <laughs> well, I did get one. Just to me, this only one copy looked more like it. artwork than. It is. I mean, I'm happy to modify the the um, um, motion. <laughs> the motion to include electrical. I mean, Tom, that was more your specification. If if it needs to be plugged in, that we have a meter for the town. I mean. I'm yeah, um, Tom, you had your hand up. Did I miss it? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the way those work for anybody that's unfamiliar with them, it literally is. Um, it just goes in line with the cord plug, and it gives a digital reading of the amount of uh, usage that's going through that sure. cord. So sure. if he only plugs one appliance in, it just gives a digital reading of the amount of power that that appliance has used. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple electrical device, and it would be something that Mark would just have to, just have to monitor and uh, let the town know how many kilowatt hours he used on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. There's already competition for that outlet. There's an outlet there yes, that is... Yes. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Stephanie, no, 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 no. Okay, then we go for a vote. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed to the motion? Motion doesn't carry. I'm sorry, Mark, uh, Mark. but keep in our face, please. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Onward to, uh, by the way, I, um, are you guys here about the Wolfies? To, yes. uh, we're going to go to that next care. without, with, the, with no more further delay, I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, if, if the board agrees, I'm going to just do a, a, <laughs> okay. an agenda switch to um, get a approval of a new taxi cab driver for Wolfies Wheels again. Wolfies yeah. is growing. <laughs> well, we've had some bumps. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I was 
wound up in the hospital three times between oh, December sorry. 7th and January 30th. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, we lost a little bit of business, but I have been driving all February, and uh, we're gaining ground again. Good. And uh, we're ready for another driver. And I will introduce to you Andrew LeBoy, who uh, put the application into the town. And uh, at this time, I would ask for your approval and uh, ask him any questions that you would like. Any questions, board? I just have one. Um, has he been approved from your insurance? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from the board? Tom? No. 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 Okay. Sorry to put you through all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to hear a lot of stuff. Uh, he is an experienced uh, taxi cab driver. Oh, good. So. Yeah, good, well, welcome. We're not to be patient with people that won't stop talking. And, about yeah, and, and he is going stuff. to be driving the late night shift. Oh, so oh. Yeah. that's great. Yeah. The quiet times. Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I second. Motion made. Second discussion. Anybody know? I just have one suggestion. Yeah. If I may. Yes, ma'am. And and I really don't like interfering with people's business plans, but I I saw when you guys go to the airports either. Portland or Bangor. Yes. I think there's a high demand for that. And I, I need to use that, and my husband <laughs> does, and I would completely be willing to share with someone else because I think we have a we would resource. Be, uh, yeah, we would be happy to do that if two people you know, wanted to go at the same time. Exactly. And so, yeah. Or even let people know, hey, there's a ride to Portland if you need to, you know, we still have one spot. I mean, I, I think that would be a super help to a lot of, of travelers. Um, most of the uh, airport runs that we've done have been people calling at the last minute, yes. whether other rides fell through yes. or, yes. Uh, you know, can you take me to Portland by 2 o'clock this afternoon? Uh, yeah. Can you pick me up at 6 a.m. and have me in Bangor by 8? Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, so, and, and, and I've encouraged, uh, anytime I've wrote anything about it, I encourage them, please make the reservation as far in advance as oh. possible. Okay. And they, I'm not doing it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's okay. It costs the same whether I take one or four. That's a very good so, point. Yeah. Well, all that said, and we're going to move to a vote. All yes. in favor of approval of a taxi cab driver, please raise your hands. And Tom has raised his hand also. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, guys. And thank keep you. it going. And, thank and, you. And, 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 stay, aboard, and st Andy. stay well. <laughs> thank you. Um, going back to item C, which is the uh, a license agreement for the existing second floor deck and patio at 10 Bayview. A little intro, Audra? Yes. So um, if you look at the as-built survey that we've included in the packet, so it's page yep. 41, you can see that in the upper left-hand corner of the town's boundary line on the public landing, we actually own the brick patio area that's in front of um, this, this, what will be this new restaurant, but um, there's, there's been a few different restaurants who have been there over the years. Um, but it, it's been used as sort of an outdoor dining area for the restaurants that are located there. Mm -hmm. So it's actually on town property, and because it is, uh, we need a revocable license agreement to allow them to operate from there. And so it's a very similar mechanism to like, um, you know, for example, when, when people are, you know, building fences or putting utilities sure. in the, in the, um, the town's right-of-way. So that's what, what this is. It would allow that business to use that outdoor space and formalize the agreement between them and the town to do so. Mm -hmm. And the agreement has a, a, a so price on it? It does not. We do not have any fees, fees for revocable license agreements, okay. which so I would recommend that we consider mm -hmm. applying some to because they do take mm -hmm. quite quite a lot of time, like much more time than most mm -hmm. permits, it, licenses. This current draft does not, that's why it does not have. We don't have a head of power to that, charge it. That's what I thought. Yeah. You don't have it, to, the, like the author, legal authority, is that what you mean? The head of power? Yeah. The head of, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's a nice job. Huh? Like, Ooh, that's a new one. Ooh, fancy. Um, <laughs> is it, <laughs> Audra, sorry. I, is, is, is they want to build above the brick path? No, no, they don't want to build anything. They just would be using that area. Oh. So. 
I missed that. Um, I wish that I had well. a. Yeah, I thought they were it's building been a deck. It's going for. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's been happening, and nobody yeah. really. It probably. So they put tables. What and, were the? And, I I just can't remember the names of the businesses that were there before. Does anybody there remember? There was fire. Was it Fireside? There was a Mexican restaurant there. No, no, yeah. it, 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 Paulina's Way. Christina's Way. No, Paulina. Paulina's, whatever the heck it was. The restaurant, then it it's, became it's, a pizza it's place that with. El, El Ancla, was that? Oh, yeah, El Ancla. Yeah, Good. Anca. The, oh, the no, the, it was, the anchor, it was yeah, here. Yeah, the anchor. Um, El Ancla. And, and then. Uh, um, so it's here. And then the place that. It's was not a Govan pizza. Or, yeah, pizza well, it was. Place. Um, it was that a, was the fire. That was, um, was ben, ben Curtis. Ben Curtis's place. Yeah. I'm went, confused. It went through two pizza places. Sorry. Actually. So there's been a lot of businesses there. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. been used. Uh, I mean, a point. Yeah, to can we? yeah because uh, I see the brick patio. Yep. That's it's there because this is our property. So they're getting licensed to use that. To use that. Yes. Not this deck here. No. Nope. Right. I thought no, that's where Ellen, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, there's like a balcony okay. above it too. So what they're going to do there, they're going to put tables and things like that. Yep. So, uh, but their cars, I mean, it's always a nightmare parking situation there. Um, Is this going to There's impede? always been tables there. Always for, been tables? For, well, the pizza yeah. place had tables there and yeah, it's narrow for a car to go, but, but it's, it's a, it's a one lane road anyway. Know. between the parking there so it's nothing new but not everybody yeah, knows the, that. every every restaurant that was there had out, minimal outdoor seating with uh, planters separating them from, from them and the cars it really feels like private property it it's does. It it's does. very similar well, in some ways to the um so do we charge ones them over rent? here mm. I don't know. we mm. we do not could we charge them rent nope mm -mm. so so they're just for free they're gonna have it Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, anyway, that's, that's how these things. That's how they are. Now, you, and you're saying we don't have the authority. Well, we, I mean, we don't with the. We don't have a. So this is a this is a like the way that Bill Kelly's described it. This is a um, legal culture that's very particular to the town of Camden. A lot of other places don't <laughs> do it this way. Isn't that quite a quote but, yeah, for just like. That's a back and forth. So, <laughs> this is a five year Basically, license. we've always done it this way. And, um, yep. yeah. That's, I mean, when it comes to, you know, businesses or pri any, any private party that wants to, or is, how do I, I don't want to put it as an intrusion, but has kind of crept into the town's oh, property or the right of way. Oh, never mind, Jerry. This is how we handle it. Thank you. Um, is this is a five year license, Audra? It's a revocable license, so you can revoke it at any time. But it's. Tom, did you have your hand up? No, I, I was saying Jeremy did. Oh, Jeremy. But he took uh, it down. I mean, I didn't, but I. I my, my opinion here is I mean, I'm. I think that this isn't a whole lot different than what we saw with Mark just a moment ago. Thank um, you, Tom. Where we're allowing a private entity to utilize town property or we're, we're talking about it. Um, and I. I get the feeling that the, the that this one's going to get approved, whereas the last one didn't get approved. And I don't. I see it. I see this as a, a comprehensive thing um, where we need to. We talk about having a, a grander plan. This has been brought up multiple times during this meeting alone. Uh, for for this space, the public landing, and other, maybe other town spaces as well. And um, we're. We should allow them to continue the use of it because it's part of their business plan for now. But we should have something in place that these these spaces should be rented. Mm -hmm. If the town owns them and they're being used for private purposes, they absolutely should be a, a, a revenue generating thing for the town. Yep. The, well, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I was reading this. Go ahead. I, yeah, I mean, there's a a little bit of difference here because it's continuing a, a historical use, but I 100% agree um, with the concept of what's being mm -hmm. said here, and it's something that we say a lot. The other one um, down at the public landing is the... Um, 
what is it, all the behind the village shop and the um, Lily Lupin and Fern, and that was one that we looked at and hasn't come back. Um, the decks that extend off of those buildings. Um, it's a, you know, it's a very similar thing. And there, since there's no mechanism, um, when we sign these, it, a select board before us signed them, and it's this revocable license that then goes somewhere, and there's no mechanism to trigger um, it to come back up again. So it, most of us end up just thinking that it's all private property unless you mark out what the town property boundaries are all the time. So I don't know if so. Sorry, should we to, be looking comprehensively? Correct, like what? Should to correct myself, or, or Janice and Jeremy both corrected me. <laughs> um, we do charge a, a fifteen hundred dollar fee sorry, that's, to this one. Yes. Oh, how interesting. Yes. But none of the others have... None of the others, but this one we do. Yeah, I, I, I thought I'd read 1500 I was just checking out what I was doing when I was yeah. your hand. I mean, and when I say none of the others, there's Harbor Dogs, they pay something. Mm. But yes. it, it would be great just to have a, a document of... We were, we were trying to corral all of these agreements mm. that we have. Um, is the best way... To have, is there any way to n not stop everything in its tracks and make people's businesses suffer, but also force some kind of a um, an inventory or a? I don't well, know what the. Well, I agree with everything being said. I don't that's know like what a the whole other project. Well, this one seems like it already does have a cost associated it, it, with it. So it, it, it has a fee. Yes, it does. I just found it makes a little more sense. It, yeah, just it to, does. Well, yeah, we have to. I, I agree with you. Said about going across, but right now we're focusing on approving or not approving this agreement, which has a fifteen hundred dollar fee in it, and I think that's a not a bad. So are they just? Is it mostly a? Is, are they asking to transfer the existing? No, this oh, would be a, a whole one. new whole new, agreement. Whole, whole new, new license. One. This is a whole new license. So the, is it the building owner in the past that has had this agreement with the town that, where did the $1,500 come from? Was it a past revocable license from a select board that is an annual? Yeah, it's, a, it's an annual fee and um, whoever the last, I, you know, because I, I don't know beyond. Right. Whoever was the last licensee. Right. So Had they're sent, they're asking fee. to have it be the same terms. Yes. Um, yeah, and it, and it's signed by both the property owner and the business owner. Yep. Or sorry, the because with the other properties that have the the, the uh, landlord and the tenant, who's the business yep. owner. Look how yeah. Um, anyway, so so the the action here is: do we approve or not of this? Oh, Jeremy does have his hand up, and so does Tom. I. Oh, yeah, and I mean, you can bring him on, but he was just making the he point making that all of this stuff will be loaded into the iWork program oh, as well. Oh, oh. So it's not oh, going to right. be, right. I mean, and it's not going to be this sort of scattered digital record keeping, right. paper record keeping without an integrated system. It's all going to go into the iWork now. Perfect. So oh, right. that'll be very helpful in so it's, 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 it is, um, to, oh, yeah. to, to Tom's question, not everybody's, is it's 1500 per year. Right. Yes. Yeah, just to be clear yes. on that. So do I have a motion to approve or not? I don't know. Does Tom, um, Tom seems to have his hand Tom, up. Tom, you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Um, so when these things come up for renewal, as it does tonight, this is our opportunity to consider what terms uh, we want to, if, if we are going to approve this, yeah, I mean, this is our opportunity. So um, maybe it's not appropriate for tonight because this one's just coming before us now. But mm -hmm. uh, this is this is something that the board needs to anticipate, and the town staff needs to let us know that this is something we need to anticipate. We have a basically a lease agreement coming up, um, and do we want to renew it? And if we do want to renew it, under what terms? Um, and the thing that I'm most uncomfortable with about this is, is that we weren't prepared that way. Um, we didn't know there was a $1,500, essentially a lease, annual lease for this. Um, and we had no opportunity to have some discussion with the person or the entity that uses this space about 
whether those are acceptable terms to them, whether those are acceptable terms to us. Well, I guess part of this is everybody being prepared, coming to meetings and reading your packet. Thank you. Thank you. Because this was I, told, I, was, I, was, I was gonna make that comment. It's our, this isn't the packet. We should have read it. I did, and I thought there was a fee in it, but I had to go back and find it. <laughs> and and uh, you're, you're, I agree with you. Uh, the more advanced notice we have is great, but that that is in the packet. It should have been read by all of us, and our bad. So wait, but just sure. So so it's in the packet. But what's the process for us to go about a renegotiation process? It, it would be tonight. If it, it, you know, would, you come prepared. You have questions. You have, you questions, have amendments you'd like to make. That's right. Okay. So let's go ahead and do it then, Audra. Yep. Is the um, is the tenant in the audience? No. Okay, so how are we prepared to renegotiate with the tenant? We're not. We're just trying to lay out the conditions the town will oh, accept. Who invites the tenant to the meeting? Oh, so we would. I think what we would do is we would say we have some concerns and we would um, direct Audra to go back and negotiate different That's correct. That's correct. terms. I yeah, think. I would suggest that the preparation come the the preparation comes from the town staff. You let the tenant no, we prepared no, it by no. creating a packet, this putting the agreement in it, and you're all your responsibility is to um, read one at a time. One at a time, Tom. One at a time. Let Audra finish, please. I was going to say our preparation is somebody comes to us and asks us to do this. We draft an agreement. We put it in your packet. You read it. You show up the meeting prepared with anything that you would like to change. Correct. And. You can decide we're not ready to vote on it because we have things that we'd like to change and we'd like to speak Correct. to the owner. Correct. Or you decide you're prepared and you vote on it tonight. Correct. And, and by the way, the owner knows it's on the agenda of the they select do. board. So yep. they, they can also show up. If they want to. If they want to, as some business owners comes when their licenses are up for, for renewal. Yeah, so. the, the, per, we, the negotiation process goes through the town manager, not, not through the select board. No, select board, we can make our comments say we, we, we won't sign it unless these things are in it and Audra has to take that back to the owner and have that discussion. We don't, we, that's really the way it works. So, this is one of the um, so I think in, in terms of, I, I know for, after being here for a few years and having these agreements kind of come up, it's taken me a few years, <laughs> really the entire time to get a little bit I guess savvier and sort of understand what's going on like okay this is our opportunity kind of like what you're seeing right now I agree that overall there needs to be just for the benefit of future decision making in town there needs to be a little bit better just a little bit more from from town staff maybe in terms of an introduction like assuming for us like Hey guys, so this is your authority here. This is your opportunity. I just, I sometimes think you maybe give us a little too much credit, like oh, and, for. And I agree, but I, I can't know about this if you, if you all don't read your packet and I come. Agree. But I mean, even you, you forgot about the fee too. So we all make oh, mistakes. Yeah. No, like, absolutely. I'm just like, saying from now on, if, if this is, if this is, if you want more information, if you want to be able to negotiate these things in advance. I don't. I don't know what questions you're going to ask. Well, to, unless you. I mean, sometimes we might need a recommendation you ask me ahead of time. Well, I guess. Yeah, be careful here because. So Janice the, says the, the, the packet comes out on Fridays. We are supposed to read the packet as just quickly. It, the reason why the packet comes out days before is so you have time to ask questions. Right. It, you know, if I, it's my bad if I didn't ask some question about the revocable license uh, before the meeting. If you have information you want to get from. To make your decision, that's part of it. Um, but you, you know, this, yeah, yeah, I think we're getting a little off track. Sure, but here. we're missing opportunities as a board sometimes because we don't see all these things as connected. So it's not a criticism really of, of anything or anybody doing anything wrong. It's just that, like, I, I Janice made a comment in the, uh -huh. in the chat saying that she has an internal spreadsheet that has all of the license she, agreements she does. She does. in there. She that does. is, new information to mm -hmm. me that would be helpful as we as we go forward and we approve this or don't approve this in this sort of piecemealed way it's um you know it's it's hard to know that okay well we just approved this but then we're going to get 
in a couple months, we should ha recognize we're going to get another request that's similar, and then we're going to have to justify our response to that based on. See, I, I, it's I, helpful to know that there are a lot of these, I guess is what I, I'm saying. I totally disagree with that because you have to face what you have at hand. And nothing is going to change my opinion if I know a similar one is coming up in two months. Uh -huh. What do I care? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're especially revo no. revocable agreements. It's revocable they're license. Each, you know, they're each different. It's just also, not leading to the greatest of, some outcome. Some of them are on like some licenses. Mm -hmm. You know, like our millions of types of business licenses and liquor mm -hmm. licenses. They're on a cycle. We, you know, we know when they're going to expire. We know yeah. when they need to renew. Yeah. Janus has a whole process of yeah. right. notifying people and. Not, and it's not our job to be no, aware no, of that. No, no, that is a, that. a service above and beyond that we, we give to our businesses in town, notifying them, mm -hmm. taking, a, you know, taking a lot of the responsibility off them to mm -hmm. help them with that. Mm -hmm. with, the, with something like this, so, that's dependent on Stuart getting a tenant who's going to open a restaurant who yeah. decides they want to use the so, patio. So yeah. we can't anticipate no. something like this. And Stuart is going coming to up and, until it does. And so I have two questions. Stuart is responsible for the fifteen hundred dollars. I'm not sure how I'm not sure so, how he works that out with yeah. his yeah, tenants. So because we have two signet, we have two parties. Yes, yes. So he's. So my question is, I just want to know if somebody doesn't pay their fifteen hundred, who do we go after? Is it Lacav or is it Stewart or is it both? Both of them. Both. Okay. Both signed. And yeah. the second question I have is, how is the fifteen hundred dollars calculated? That's so. Again, I have no idea because this right. was used as a historic. So we're ju we're just oh, Janice is on nope. as well. Okay. Does Janice so, know? But I mean, so my my concern. Um, is that that fee may be too low for yeah, that piece of real estate, and yeah, so how do we how do we re evaluate this? I mean, I I would charge them five thousand dollars a year. We don't have any fee schedule. I'm we don't have sure any fee schedules or Janice, calculation. Did, uh, or Tom, one second. Staff recommendation uh, would sometimes be helpful. Janice, but. did you do, did you have any comments on that? You're muted. Janice, we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> really good. You're still <laughs> muted. <laughs> you push the talk button. No, nope. you're still nothing. not actually muted no, by the system. She's maybe her speaker in her house maybe or a speaker. Maybe a speaker's not on. It would be a microphone. <laughs> but bold. Yeah. Well, while you figure it out, maybe we can well, While she's to doing Tom. that, Tom, do you want to make a comment? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so when was the last time, when, when was this $1,500 per year fee set? In this agreement. No, when? No, no, no. It's, 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 uh, a, it's, yeah, they're I, using the same yes. terms than the previous one. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. Any business in town, we, I think, I think every business in town has raised their rates in the last five years. Is this, mm -hmm. is this a five year agreement, the previous agreement? Mm -hmm. This is, is do we have a do, in the in the packet? I'm and I'm sorry, I should know this. Um, but it was there. The, is there the previous agreement? Is, no. Was that in there no, too? No, we only no, see no. the new one. So you took the previous agreement and created a new agreement from that. And put their name on it. But it would be helpful to see the previous yeah, agreement right. just to understand. You know, it I, uh, that, that's the previous what agreement is the pre is the past. It doesn't matter. No. I mean, I think we we, know. we saw we, the no, previous sorry, agreement for all the is, other. My point we, is. Um, it's the same system. Yeah, we're gonna, Again, this is our opportunity. It is. It is. To look at this. It is. And decide whether this is something we want to continue. And it's also obviously an opportunity, and the board's taking this opportunity to discuss how we want to handle these situations in the future. But we definitely need something from the town staff that gives us a historic perspective of where this was, how this came into place, why it's built like the way it is. When was the last time it was negotiated? Uh, if we want to make changes, mm -hmm. how do we go about that process? If you want to make changes, you just need to, if you, for example, if we don't think the fee is high enough, we can recommend a higher fee. That's, that's what we can do. Fee. We can do that right now. Uh, if, if, you know. Yeah, I was going to do that one. Everybody else. Well, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first license was set in 2013 for five years, and they only paid the first two years, and they only paid the first. Two years ago, Stuart did not 
owned the building back then, and the 1500 was set by previous board 10 years ago, and it was supposed to have a certain percentage increase every year. Oh. Um, so we took no action? We took no action when he, did, when he didn't pay? Sounds like it. Sounds like there was no increase in fees for a number of years. So who was responsible for implementing that increase in fees? It wouldn't come back before the board every year. Wouldn't that be town staff that was no, responsible? No, no. Not in, Tom, if it was written and said 2% per year, it's automatic. If it says it's usually be at the discretion of the board. I know it's automatic, but who makes sure that gets paid? Well, that's not, that's not the board's job. That's the town's job. <laughs> Yeah. But um, exactly. it, it, it it's just... a lot of work for it. I mean, what I'm understanding is that all of this stuff is a lot of work. Yeah. I guess maybe what I need is a recommendation from you, Audras, the town manager. You know this is kind of an issue um, that in the future we might want to do better. There's only so much we can do mm -hmm. now. Like, what's your recommendation for how we would handle this I would right now without like damaging us for the future. Don't look at this the same way you looked at the hawkers and peddlers process. There's a reason why this is different, and that reason is that this little slice of town property that we're talking about mm. is right up against the edge of the building, mm. like of a, right. of a private building, and yep. this is for like a private business to be able to expand out onto you know, property that's owned by the town. Right. That's why we use this mechanism. It's the same thing with mm -hmm. when private residences want to do the same thing. We use that same mechanism. So I think that, you know, for cases like this, where it's businesses that want to encroach onto town property, this is a perfectly reasonable way to do this. As for the value of, of what that is, that is incredibly subjective. Yep. And if we were to do like, for, for the amount of land that we're talking about, to do something other than just put like a best guess is a huge waste of resources and time. Mm -hmm. What's frankly. a parking spot worth? Like, because I would say a parking spot is worth $1,000 a month. A month? A month. Yes. Because that's essentially what it is down there. It's if it's there, somebody could park there, and instead of parking well, I there. Don't think so. Well, I mean, I don't some. Think so. and, I mean, we can debate that, but it's close. And so they're going to be parking on town property instead. So it should be reasonably consistent with the cost of a parking space. Yeah, I don't but if we don't have, we don't. I don't believe you can put a car against that building and not stick out in the street. That's, it that's, doesn't matter. I mean, I think, I think the, the reasoning, if I may speak for Allison, which I don't like doing, but the reasoning, it's roughly the same kind of area. So we should charge the same price for the same, for the same space, right? What's the same? Because we could have made it a paid parking spot for our paid what do, parking pro What are we recommending program. for the price then? Make a recommendation. I made a recommendation that we charge them $5,000 a year. Oh, right. I did. That, that's my recommendation. Yeah. It's prime, prime real estate. You, I mean, we can't, it, it, that's my own. And, and I, I, I couldn't support that. You think that's too high? Yep. Wow. What, would, what would it cost if we went back to the 2% 10 years ago? So can we do the math on that? Which was the agreement? Yeah, it's probably a, in the order of two percent, so fifteen hundred, uh, two percent. You're talking about thirty dollars a year. No, twenty, twenty, thirty percent. It would, it would be about in. between two thousand and twenty-five hundred. At least we've made an agreement that was generally accepted ten years ago, and we have a basis for it. What does Harbor Dogs pay? I forget. Is that around three thousand? I don't remember. I think it was a Rockland food trucks oh, paid three thousand, right? Some, there's some credibility in what yeah. Tom said because you take, yeah. if you take a, if, if it was, Audra, correct me if I'm wrong. If there was a in the original agreement, a X percent or probably can increase it every year by an increment. It's probably in the order of two percent over ten years. It's probably between two thousand and twenty-five hundred dollars. That's where we'd be today. And that's more reasonable. Five thousand dollars is just a number out of the air. To Audra's so, point. So it's fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah. That, that, Sorry, that's it's, exact, equally, it's equally. Sophie, we, no, no. That's exactly the point Audrey just no, made. No, but we, I mean, yeah. so so either we rent. And, <sighs> Make a motion, I, but I'm not supporting $5,000. I'm not supporting $5,000. 2500 2250 and 50 cents. It's a bar. In two, in two weekends, they cover this. No, Come I, on. Math. Let's do the math of what 2% is from 10 years, and, and we'll see there. No. It, I, that, that was agreed upon. 
There's a precedent. It, it's 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 it compounded. It's probably a bit closer to 2,500, but it's probably like 23 something. Because two percent over ten years is twenty percent, but you compound it, so it makes it about thirty percent. So thirty percent on fifteen hundred is two thousand. So I'm saying a little more than that. It's probably around twenty two, twenty three hundred dollars. I make a motion that we approve this license for the fee of twenty five hundred a year, with all other terms as written. Second. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion. Tom, your hands up. Are we going to t continue the two percent increase? Yep. At least what? What two percent? The agreement. Inflation. Yes, the, the agreement doesn't have any any. Uh, no, we can add it. I mean, seriously, two percent. I can't tell. You're well, you're upset. I'm, I'm you saying, want I'm, the two percent, or you don't? I can't this tell. Is, what, yes. No. Two per, no. You want it or not? No, I don't want two percent. I want at least inflation. Oh, at okay. At least. Like. Right. I mean, the town has to do. We have to do this whole cola thing every year. I mean, C like CPI, CPI index for CPI. CPI. Something, something realistic. Maybe CPI or something that's uh, that's measurable rather than. Then we should be doing that with every single license that we have, of and course. because oh. otherwise, town staff is going to have to be like, oh, does the floor yeah, for yeah. twenty-five hundred dollars? It's a yes or a no. Right, and maybe we well, do I'll cola later. Any second, any other further discussion? All those in favor. We get one, two, three, four. All those get this right. All those yeah. opposed. Uh, completely opposed. Okay, you might as well give it for, to them for free. You, you don't count. But this is only. A, I mean, can what's the mechanism for this to come back up again? I forgot. You revoke it. Yeah. So what? I have to request that Bob put it on the agenda to. Sure. Next year. Yeah. Or anytime, actually. That's the problem. Those are the things that we never come give, back we up. We have to give three months' notice. For uh -huh. Revocation. At least with not 20 years like the Yacht Club. But. <laughs> no, it's not 20 years. Sorry. No. All right, onward um, to our next item, which, as I recall, I lost track completely, is the, um, <laughs> is the extension oh, Janice of paid parking question. pilot program for 2023. Right. Correct? Right. And there's, now there is a little missive that was written by the group in Sorry. our packet, which I did read. Um, Audra, do you want to just summarize what you? Sure. So there, there are two documents. So one is a memo that um, I wrote, but it's a summary of the recommendations of the um, working group. Yep. We had a meeting on uh, um, the 18th of January, and we discussed the memo or um, letter that's also in your packet from John Burke, where he summarized the findings of the uh, pilot program from this summer. Yes. And we had a good discussion about that as well as some recommendations and some comments that were given to us by Scott Entwistle when he um, moved on to another opportunity. And based on both the analysis from John and the recommendations from Scott as well as some other feedback um, that everybody had received the group came up with the following recommendations. So some of them are specific to the paid parking program and others are more general about um, how we can make some changes to our current parking system so it just functions better going into the summer of 2023. So the first uh, recommendation they had was to extend the program into the 23 season from May to November. And they thought that this was prudent, given that the program started fairly late mm -hmm. in the tw the summer of 2022 because of um, you know purchasing and receiving and installing equipment, so that the data that collected was quite limited. Just to be clear, is this May 1 to November 30, or May 1 to November 1? Um, yes, beginning of May. What, right, May 1 to November 30. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So. Sorry, was there anything else you, okay. <laughs> so uh, they thought that running the, the pilot for the entire season would give us really important data that would be helpful for any mm -hmm. considerations about expanding and adjusting mm -hmm. the program. Mm -hmm. So there was discussion about expanding it to include maybe on-street parking, maybe other you know, surface lots in town, but they decided why don't we just go slow for another season, get a full season of data just at the landing yep. before they make any other recommendations on expanding it. 
Um, so they also thought that to encourage turnover, there should be a maximum of four hours. So as it is now, you're only supposed to park in those spots. I think it's a three hour maximum, uh -huh. but they thought four hours would be a good amount of time um, to give particularly people who are visiting town the opportunity to come and do multiple things within the downtown. Sure. And it would still increase that or still uh, incentivize that turnover so that, yeah, absolutely. So. The idea is it starts out with, um, you know, people can pay for, you know, one hour, two hours, three hours, all the way up to four. But after four, they really do have to leave and, and go to more longer term parking if they want to stay. Mm -hmm. um, so and that would be from the 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. window of time. Right. And also after the first two hours, the prices would escalate in the next two because that will also help encourage turnover. Mm -hmm. um, so the town also or they encourage the town to improve signage in the following areas. So um, adding more handicapped parking signage at the public landing that explains that they don't have to, handicapped parking is free. So anybody who qualifies for it doesn't have to pay for that and making that pretty explicit. Mm -hmm. Also improving signage um, at the loading unloading area mm -hmm. uh, for commercial and recreational boaters who use the public landing. So I think, you know, there are some people particularly uh, dinghy permit holders who might want to be, you know, unloading their dinghies who don't realize that, you know, they can just go there and use that loading and unloading area. They actually don't have to park and figure all of that out. So making that or clear. Or bailing out their dinghies. Or bailing out their That's dinghies. <laughs> whatever, or dinghy maintenance, whatever they're there for. <laughs> Uh, also improving signage near the Chamber of Commerce building about the program because that seems to be an area where a lot of people go to if they want to find out more about what they need to do. Uh, and also um, coupon codes that would allow free parking for one Chamber of Com Commerce volunteers during their volunteer shifts um, as well as residents age 65 or older who like to recreate at the public landing for several hours during the week who aren't eligible for handicap placards. What does so, several hours per week mean? It's, it's all very informal, how that's gonna go. They basically show up and they ask for a coupon. And I see, yeah. I but see. So would that give them, sorry. Um, that sounds pretty good um, to me. If, would that, is there a way to track that? So can you give them a code that gives, that automatically allocates six hours a week or something to we, yes we we're going to figure that. it out but they have to apply for it right no i like that somebody that wants to come in and i don't i think most people aren't going to do it but um that's yes, true but if it's limited number of hours per week that's, but that's for people that have. that are that's a good way feel it's it. a hardship for them and it's for people who are not eligible for a, a handicap yeah that makes oh i trust me i'm Which aware is, of the demographic i've had some conversations this, this category is half but the population. we actually have a way of doing it yeah but yes but we do Okay, keep going. We have right. published a list of no. <laughs> no, but we can also restrain. We, we can have like. We'll see. We'll just collect the data. Exactly. Can we, will we be able to know we how much it. it's used? Yes. Yes. Because there, there's a code. Yeah. Everything's going to go through the machine. I know, but I've been tr like. Yes. Are yeah. we going to get the data from yeah. what happened over the summer at some so point? We or so we have do in the like the report that you have has a lot of that data in okay. it. Okay. But we also have a new parking enforcement officer young guy oh spencer nice. tooley oh yeah. right okay That's and uh he's right. he's mulling the data for us yeah. oh so i'm gonna yeah, he's gonna... looking at the enforcement data so what yeah. john oh summarized in in his report is data from the actual meters but spencer has scott's enforcement data so okay. i'm gonna work with him on, so on that... extracting more data from this tom Thank you. Uh, my first question is, um, do we have any uh, precedent for the increasing fees? Um, I, I, I know it's stated as sort of a blanket statement that we're going to encourage people to leave by increasing the fees for the second two hours. Mm. But is there, you know, a municipality or an entity that has that has tried that? Do we have an example of what those increased fees would look like? Yes. I mean, I, to me, it, it seems like once you're settled in there, you know, well, do we have any data on that? Yes. Yes. We, that, we do. And, and by the way, Tom, one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got from the group and from especially the Chamber of Commerce and from Scott is that the group that came to the, the advisory parking group 
all said that they, it increased turnover. They're very happy with that, with that project because they see mm -hmm. more turnover. Mm -hmm. They see pe people also shared with Scott that it was easier for them to find a parking spot. So these are things that we, we really want to hear. Increased I bet you probably need your and, microphone a little closer. But. Increased turnover and, and it's easier to find a spot. I think Bar Harbor has a scaling fee mm -hmm. uh, to encourage turnover as well. And we can of, ask... Part of Portland does and too. And part of Portland. We can ask John Burke for yeah, example it's, it's of that. Common. But He has a lot of other examples yeah. of where they do it yeah, too. It's not uncommon. Would John ever be able that, to just come back and do a that quick... That does lead into my second question, um, and that is, um, do we actually have data on the turnover? Um, we, we, obviously, we'd have to have historic data on that. Yep. Um, and yep. and what, the, what the parking was before we implemented this system, mm. and then what the turnover was or the difference in turnover after we implemented this system. I think... Uh, I think the... It's just supposition, I would think. Yeah. So I think we probably don't have data on the turnover no. before the this system was implemented simply because enforcement was not yeah. it was almost it, we had we had designed a system that was almost impossible well, to, to enforce. enforce. Right. Yeah. And yeah. the way it is now it is it is almost self enforcing. Exactly. Because pricing something yeah. enforces how like it, it changes the, your relationship to it and how you use it yeah you'll Tom Tom's question you'll, you'll have that data you alluded to it Tom after the summer we'll, well have a lot data. of it a lot of it is in the report that John, no, I, so, I, but his yeah. question about turnover year to year we'll be able to look at what oh what year it, after year but I, I forward I would say if you if you don't read anything else in this packet please read John's yes, report absolutely yeah. So basically, these are the four items related to paid parking because the ones down below are related to RVs and that kind of these other two. And we points. discussed that too. I mean, it was a really good meeting with a lot of ideas and, and suggestions from everyone. Oh, do you want me to get back to the more general yeah. recommendations? Yeah. So these had nothing to do with the um, public landing pilot. Um, a lot of it had to do with RV and tour bus parking, yep. more longer term. Yeah. So RV parking has is, is been a real challenge because, um, you know, a lot of them, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a genuine, they, they want to do the right thing, they just don't know where to go. And so a lot of them have been going into like the Knox Mill lots and yep. parking across five spaces. Yep. The reason why that's particularly problematic now is because so many of the people who used to park down at the landing and shuffle around all day, are now parking longer term up at the Knox Mill lot, which is exactly what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. But if we have RVs that are parked across five spaces, yep. that makes that makes that difficult. So yep. we're going to be one of the recommendations was more um, enforcement of no parking for RVs yep. in um, uh, the Knox Mill lot and uh, and some of those lots, particularly overnight, uh -huh. uh, as well as at Late Beach because that's a problem too. Um, and, and the public safety lot. So mm -hmm. instead of them going there, mm -hmm. um, so tour buses and RVs will be encouraged to park at the tannery in the snow bowl mm. with overnight RV parking to be permissible at the snow bowl. Only. Yes. Only. Yeah. Okay. Any comments on these recommendations other than they sound pretty good? There was a lot of complaints about RV parking. Yes. We spent a lot of time. Well, you know, RV that's parking. very, very common and the most and difficult thing to handle in a small town. Yeah. Probably, I'm probably like the source of 50% of the complaints because I and park Allison up there and when I see them, I call in about it. Yeah. So. Oh, I thought you were the one with the RV. RV. I was like, oh my. Where did you um, get an RV? Yeah. No. So, but I also think it's important to like not stigmatize the RV people um <laughs> there is a real negative attitude sometimes. toward them sometimes because we haven't provided and this is what i talked to scott a lot about it was really uncomfortable for him because you know he didn't like like you already said he didn't have anywhere to tell them to go but when you talk to a lot of them they're really cool people that are coming to camden to enjoy you know all the things that we want them to enjoy and they rented an rv and mm -hmm. it's I mean, so if the snowball is that, um, it's doable. you know, there's no way of them getting back and forth to, 
town. I mean, that's where we give them Wolfie's Wheels like, number, I guess. And A lot of RV people <laughs> drag their own cars. Yeah. A lot of yeah. RV people have little bikes, bikes. bicycles, motor, yeah. motor bikes, motor. And, and, and or if they're going to go to Hannaford for food, they can still drive their RV for that yep. there. And then they, for the night, the only time they really are there is at night when they're staying mm -hmm. overnight. So we're going to, and, and during the day, the tannery is going to be encouraged. Yeah. I have this like feeling in the back of my mind that that's gonna um, Maybe. need to be defined or cause. Yes. Well, um, you be careful. We don't. What yeah. about policing? <laughs> right, but I don't know, like where in the tannery well, and then that, the that, that farmers that, market and what about this? What about along the sidewalk on Washington Street or we can deal with that later? Those are, later. those are. I mean, to, the, you the, guys the can, discussion. The discussion is is basically do we. Re-upping on a, a full summer yeah. of paid parking with the changes recommended yep. by the advisory yep. committee. I think the comments they made on the RV parking, we need to address them because it's yes. a, a constant, yes. constant yes. Uh, issue. But that requires a. It, this is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I like the. I mean, I'm very happy We're that you're planning on RV. It's just that we need to find a good spot for them. And that doesn't take five parking places when they when they I mean, it's the same problem whether we do paid parking or not. I'm glad it's a great. Sounds like you guys are talking about parking and making some good recommendations. So, Tom, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I think the origin, and I wasn't on the board when this was originally brought forward, um, but I think the origin of this was to in, to improve downtown parking, to increase parking turnover. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what we're receiving for data is financial data. Um, I would like to see, and I, I'm going to support another uh, season of this. Uh -huh. um, I, what I would like to see is actual data rather than on finances, how much money it's bringing and sure. such. Sure. I think that's ancillary here. Um, I would like to see actual data on what it's doing for turnover. So, um, and I understand that we don't have the baseline pr prior right, to the monitored right, parking, right. but um, that's the sort of thing that moving forward, I would, I'd be more encouraged to support it, um, you know, full time or long term. Yes. If we could see that this was working. Yeah. Your you, primary purpose. Yeah. Good point, Tom. Thank you. It is a good point, and and we can, but we we can track the turnover in the public landing against other surface lots in the downtown that we own. Yes. And use mm -hmm. that as a comparison. But I'm, I'm also going to, but I'm also going to put a caveat to the, to the turnover data we have for this summer, because also remember that we were very lax in the enforcement. Yes. 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 So, so the true baseline, if you will, Tom, will be in 2023 yeah, I because agree. we'll have I seven agree. months of data. Yeah, I we'll agree. have enforcement from day one. Mm. So, so the conditions to create a baseline will be met this year. We can take it as an anecdotal yeah. set of, of data and, and evidence, but, but the full baseline is 2023. Audrey, do you need a motion from us to support the pilot program a, for 2023? I make a motion that we support the, the pilot program from 2023 with the changes proposed by the advisory committee. Second. Motion made and seconded. And further discussion? I would, well, I would just want to say briefly two things. Could we, is this report by itself, not out, not in the packet. It cannot be put somewhere on the website yes. that we can. Sure. So I'll um, post it under. You know, we have the paid parking committee, program yeah. area. Sure. We'll, we'll put that there. Why not? Um, because just that document by itself, that's a even. It might be, even be worthy of a it, it, news item. Yeah. And then the second thing, I think the goals of it were multiple, and for you know some demographics turnover would be the primary goal for some it would be revenue if I've understood correctly that turnover isn't necessarily a higher goal than revenue or was it I do we have a defined I would say, primary goal I would say that the primary goal was how do we best manage our parking supply yes, yes. so how do we we best match supply with demand because we we know from the the study that we've done we've got plenty of supply but our supply is not meeting the demand because of you know 
areas that are farther away people don't park in and areas that are this close cool. there's a lot of competition to yep. park in them yep. there's a lot of costs associated with maintaining that supply over the long yes. term so i would just say revenue is just well, as i would say revenue i mean i don't think we should kid ourselves that revenue is going to be really important to this program oh, right and also i think it's going to be very important to the citizenry and and supporting this because if it continues to be as financially successful as it has been it has a potential to offset a lot of yes. costs in yes, the budget yes, yes, yes. because it's an alternative yes. source of revenue yes. yeah. as opposed to taxes. So that said, I'm going to move to all those in favor of the motion that's made and seconded. Aye. Uh, thanks, Tom. It's all, all unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, on to, um, well, there's one bit of license renewal <laughs> for fresh restaurant and one baby landing. Could I have a motion to, uh, for that license renewal, please? I make a motion that we approve the renewal of the Victor license for fresh restaurants. Okay. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. All those in favor? Thanks. Aye. Thank you, Tom. Um, and that's a unanimous, 5 0. Next, a confirmation of library trustees, of which there are two. Um, in the packet. Um, can I make a suggestion for this? Uh, you can make anything you want. For this item that we examine each uh, application individually? Yes. Please. Oh, absolutely. Not as a oh, no, we don't, we don't have to address any as a bulk. We can okay. do individual. There's no problem with that. Thank you, Chair. As a point of order, yes. our bylaws state that if we go past a 9 o'clock term, we must vote and approve that oh. we do that. Night. That's what the <laughs> point of order is taken. Okay. So. So do but but do we vote to put a time limit or just that we continue until well, we're you done? Can, you, you can do a couple of things. You, you can shut. <laughs> exactly. You seem to be additional <laughs> approval of going. You, you can beyond. shut it down. You know, if that would have vote for the board, you could uh, pick a time to shut down because before I'm waiting for Tom to fall on his face. That's what uh, I was thinking uh, of who's mostly. Time zone? Who's time zone? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're, you're correct. That's what we wrote. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do, board? So, what do you want that we continue for another half an hour, if needed? Till nine thirty. Well, we can. We can. I don't. Yeah, I'm open to suggestions. I second. Oh, I don't. Know. I'm just made it. I second that. We I, nine thirty seems reasonable to me. So, no, so standing by. Okay. What, okay. How Motion many more made second at nine thirty. All those in favor. Oh. Tom, you shouldn't vote yes. On I was going to say, I feel like I probably should I feel have like gone should be like Tom led, given the yeah. time right, zone. Let's not talk anymore. I probably should have gone for nine. We've got two. We, if we have to leave some things off, we will. But right, the two most important. Are the, we got a couple of confirmations here, um, and um, one I'll discuss in a minute. The second one, but this one is for two individuals that have been nominated by the library trustees for membership. Um, we'll take which one first. Uh, Elizabeth. Okay. You've got to say. I would move that we. I, I so I don't know I don't know Elizabeth, but but uh, I was at the library board of trustees when the, when the vote took place, and uh, she was a pretty smooth sailing okay. uh, approval from okay. I, I think the majority I mean uh -huh. more than the majority of the board almost unanimous I would say so it was unanimous but it was it was unanimous. Of my reports are all secondhand, so I don't I wasn't because I was there, but there, I didn't but write it down. But 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 I know she had a high rate of approval. Um, I think she has a great background and she's willing to serve and I, I think she would be a great board of trustee. Okay. So I, my recommendation is that we, is that we, we a motion. I'm making a motion that we approve I have a second. Elizabeth. I second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Anybody? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Five including Tom, Senators, thank you. Right? Yeah. Uh, sorry? Did we get the last name? That's Elizabeth Sanders. I, I said Elizabeth, but yeah, please, yeah, Caitlin, yeah. add the last name of Elizabeth. Yeah. And Elizabeth, I apologize. The, the for second that. nominee, Dennis McGurk. So my notes. So this, from my attendance at the Library Board of Trustees, this nomination was um, led to a much more expanded conversation. Um, and mainly, um, in my, my take is that uh, in the past, I mean, Dennis has been on the Board of Trustees in the past, and, for, and I don't know this person, but from my understanding is that uh, Dennis uh, and the town, uh, Dennis does not pr uh, participate in creating a collaborative environment with the town. And I think it's really important because of all the issues we're going to have 
to face with the library. When we talk about the seawall, the dam, all those things, it's really important that we have a board of trustees with whom we can have open conversations and we can have disagreement, but that we can find common ground. And from what I understand, I'm not sure Dennis will help us fi find common ground. So I, I have a, a concern about this okay. nomination. Okay, thanks. Uh, Alice, go ahead. Um, I, I know Dennis, and I, I personally can find lots of common ground with Dennis on, on many issues. Um, he's a really smart guy, um, and even on the, the, I've talked to him at length about the dam and the seawall, and there are many areas of common ground there. Um, I share the concern about um, the, the fact that it wasn't a close to unanimous or close to unanimous um, uh, recommendation from you know, the Library Board of Trustees. Um, they tend to be a fairly easy group to get along with. Um, and I think in mainly the, one of the most important roles of the Library Board of Trustees is um, <coughs> overseeing the parks, the amphitheater in the park, um, in Harbor Park, and you know Mary Louise Curtis Bach being the the donor that um, gave a lot of the property that we most enjoy in town was gifted by her with certain deed restrictions, and I have seen over the years that many times when. Um, there seems to be broad consensus among residents that they they want something. Um, you know, picnic tables, for instance. It's a a very you know small example, but I remember you know especially with the Village Green, um, and so many people saying during during COVID, hey, can we just get a couple picnic tables on the Village Green? And everybody seemed to agree about this very, this very simple thing. We've got this town space. We'd like to try to do this for a little bit. And um, that the, the, you know, the interpretation of um, gifts of deed and commercial activity and things like that over the years, um, there, there are different ways of interpreting the wishes of, of, of Mrs. Bach. And are you I, saying that Dennis doesn't agree with those interpretations or? I think that there's been, um, uh, what I've seen is a, a very rigid interpretation that um, I don't think, um, or has been shown not, not to necessarily reflect the opinion of the Bach family. Um, it may have reflected the opinion of several of the members at a given point in time, but um, I think that with these amazing town resources that we have, we should be looking a little bit more broadly. And you know, certainly, if all of the Bach family has a has a concern, um, that should be. I, I think there are different ways to interpret history, and that some um, decisions that have been made in the past have been like really forcefully advocated for. Um, and prevented us from taking advantage of, of these resources that we have and that they haven't really necessarily reflected the um, feelings of the Bach family. You know, I'll say when we, when the picnic tables thing, we, we got a letter. But, so but, anyway, but Allison, I'm, yeah. are you saying that Dennis does not have those same values that you're speaking of right now that Mrs. Bach may have written down? What I mean, I'm not going to speak to anybody's values. What you just said values. right now, does that have anything to do with Dennis? Y yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so you think that he will uphold those sort I'm of concerned values or that he will not I'm, uphold those values? The values are not um, entirely objective. So things like whether... There, I've, I've seen a tendency from him to speak from a perspective of believing that he firmly knows what Mrs. Bach would have wanted or not wanted, and a tendency for other people who are not as um, 
maybe well versed on the issue to assume that that's correct. But when you actually dig a little deeper, there's um, there are a lot of things that Mrs. Bach wanted that don't come into the conversation, and I um, I just think that there's um, that. He's, you know, he, Dennis has been on the board in the in the past. He can contribute, can continue to contribute as um, an advisor, as a volunteer. Um, but I have heard so much from residents that they would like a little bit more of um, a, a, maybe a reexamination or a more flexible view of what Mrs. Bach really wanted, not just what happened to happen at one point in 1931. And um, yeah, I just think yeah. there might be better candidates out there. Other comments? But mostly it's the fact that it wasn't a unanimous, it troubles me that it wasn't a unanimous, you know, there's disagreement in the library board. If, if there had been complete agreement there, I would say, okay, I, I trust that there was a robust conversation and that but I just, um, I'd be more comfortable with a unanimous recommendation. I, I and I think, um, I, I think that uh, Sophie had a point that's important uh, from my perspective, and that is uh, I, I, I have believed since my time on the board that the relationship between the board and the town and the, and the library has been strained. Um, it, and, and, and its foundation is on the core of the well, just lack of specificity, whatever the word is, uh, of what's in the agreement between us. It doesn't cover stuff. For example, the uh -huh. um, root of it is um, uh, we need all these things. We can town, write a check. I'm exaggerating. They need help. I get it. They they work miraculously hard to go out and find money to fund their portion of what they need to do. But that that bridge needs to be um, needs to be mended, uh, and it and it takes. And I'm saying this because. Dennis and I are really not very different. He's a little younger than me, I think, but we come from the same generation. And I know this because I would not want me to be on the Board of Trustees of the Library. And I would expect to me to be voted down. And the reason is, is because what I, I learned in, in a similar environment to what, what he learned in business is highly not applicable today. If you spend time, as I have, talking to Gen X, Y, and now Z, my, my mouth is open because they don't relate to what the stones that I honed my sword on for 40 years in business. And I have, even sitting in this chair, I have had to temper some of that. Otherwise, I would kill myself. Because it, it, it's really, this is no, this, and it's not a personal insult to the person. It, 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 it's what we were, but Dennis is extremely detailed. I love talking to the guy because he's technical like myself and that kind of thing. But I don't believe the board needs people like me and Dennis at this point in time. Tom. I, I don't know Dennis, um, but he was <laughs> recommended by the library's board of trustees. He, he achieved a majority at a minimum. Um, he, his name is on this letter. Um, what is our alternative if we uh, choose not to name Dennis to the Board of Trustees? They would have to go back to the board and-, and They have and, a flexible yeah. number of board members. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't have to have a specific number. It doesn't cripple them in any way, if that's your question. It doesn't prevent right. them from operating. No. And I mean, really, this speaks to the, the larger issue of we don't tend to address this comprehensively. We don't, um, we, you know, for the first few times I voted on library board of trustees members, I didn't really understand what their role and authority was. And then I've had for years town residents saying, well, why can't the town do this over here? Why can't the town do this over here? Oh, well, that's a matter for the library board of trustees. Well, who chooses them? Oh, well, we do. We do. And so, I, this is, this is a, uncomfortable for me because I, I like to approve recommendations, but I've too many times had to explain to people a decision that is just difficult for me to defend because I am, you know, we're, we're putting our stamp of approval on these people who get to make the final 
decision about all things pertaining to the library, the amphitheater, and, and Harbor Park, um, you pick, you know, picnic whether there can be picnic tables. I'm, when it comes down to a very simple thing, I'm afraid there might, you know, one day not. People like the picnic tables in Harbor Park. Um, Dennis worked very, very hard to try to convince everybody that Mrs. Bach would be turning over in her grave if she saw picnic tables on the Village Green. Um, he was almost very successful because he's very persuasive, um, but it, it didn't turn out to be the opinion of the family. So. so the example you just used is an example where Dennis was a voice of dissent, but those things were still approved. Uh, I, I don't, I don't actually have an issue at all with having a different opinion, a voice of dissent, somebody who might have a different vision or mm -hmm. maybe even a historical perspective. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we have these boards. That's why not one of us makes all the decisions. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't see any reason to turn him down. He was approved by the, his peers or his potential peers. Um, it was a majority vote. And you know what? Then they have their own forums, just like we have our forums. Um, and, and in the end, we vote, we vote and we agree that the majority rules. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any reason to turn him down. Okay. Sure, I guess I would, you know, there's, the minutes aren't available from that meeting or it's something I'd certainly be willing to, to re-examine, but I'm putting my seal of approval on something and um, I don't have enough information to feel confident about it tonight, but um, I, I see a lot of value in dissent also. Um, I think in the past, the library has not wanted you know, people on really strong on one side or the other. Um, they might not want me. Um, right. Anyway, I, yeah, I can see a lot of value in what Tom is saying, but I don't have enough information to feel was good the, about uh, it. Was the session and discussion open session for the, uh, approving him as a trustee or a closed session? It was, it was open. It's they did things differently, though. They did, there was a secret vote. No, um, no it's a secret vote. Uh, yeah, it was a secret vote on Zoom, and so you could see the percentage. But I, I, I mean, the, the conversation before the vote was extremely contentious. I was not expecting this. Um, so can we can we get a hold of that information? I, we can ask for the minutes of the of the meeting. It's minutes only. There's no video. I don't think they record they do video, it. But it's not, you have to be there in order to watch it. It's a little different than how we operate. There's nothing to prevent them from, from making the recommendation again and having us yeah. reconsider. It's not the same as um, our other committees or the, like the planning board that needs a minimum number of people. They're not at that level. I, I mean, it, it was, the fraction was really generational also. It was very clear. So I'm just going to put it to a vote. I yeah. propose. Um, sorry, what do I say? Uh, do you, maybe you, you try and propose to to, you want uh, to, to decide on, on to um, vote and approve approve her the library's trustee. recommendation mm -hmm. of a trustee to appoint Dennis McGurk. McGurk. Do you have a second? I second. second. Motion. Sophie beat you to it, Tom. <laughs> but uh, further discussion. All those in favor? Tom is in favor. All those opposed? All right. Four to one is um, not approved. Uh, again, I would love to have had more information from the library on the on the pros and cons and what they were, uh, rather than. Um, you know, because my only concern is all of ours is that Dennis doesn't take this personally. He's a great person, and right. I tremendously admire him. But I think there's a more substantive issue lurking in the background that we need to address. Now, if there's some way we, we can get some information from them, that would, for uh, you know, that would that's fine. If we can't, we can't. We should also probably coordinate with um, the board of trustees on how they would like us to how they handle um, interest in being on the board. Yep. Um, I think I heard at, at one meeting that there's an open process where people can okay. um, express interest. But, you know, we, when we have that committee interest form that we give to people and they kind of see all the opportunities for being involved in the town, it might be good 
to say, you know, if you're interested in these parts of town, this is, you know, contact the library or contact well, um, I, so that, I agree. I agree. you know. I want to move on because we only got five minutes, and but most important, but, but to that, and it's not because of the five minutes or whatever time we have. Um, I think it was my bad to put this on the agenda regarding the budget committee because I've had oh, I've had. Uh, I'm sorry, Bob. We haven't we haven't approved Liz. No, we did. did. We vote on Liz. We, we did. vote on what? We approved Liz. Oh, we did vote on Liz. Oh yeah, yeah, we did, Tom. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. Tom, I'm surprised you're still upright. It was uh, only unanimous vote tonight. Right. Um, it was not memorable right. enough. That's, that's right. I, um, not um, in the minutes. The that one, budget, we, we have a, we, I've had uh, a number of people said, I, we didn't know this was being vetted. Number two, we have a limited number of applications. And I don't think I would recommend tabling this till the 21st. And it must be done on the 21st. It must be done. It must be done uh, to get. You know, I, I always, it, when you have, you know, five seats and five applications, that's, that's not, that's, that doesn't wage. It's not I, I also, I'm, I know this is not an agenda item, but I want to throw this out. We really need to, we need a charter amendment and how budget committee oh, I, I, members I, I, are, yes. because it's like this weird hybrid system that they created where you right. are supposed to fill out a committee interest form and also get your name on the ballot, which doesn't work. That just. Those two no. things are cross purposes. We, consider that we need June. to draft people. That's the only. I solution. will make a motion that we table. <laughs> is it H? Uh, 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 the, yes. The budget committee, well, and just... I request that Bob puts it first on the agenda, as it can land, so we make sure that we get it done in the next meeting on the. It 21st. has to be done on the twenty-first. The motion should be. It yeah, but we don't want to do it when we're all foggy and foggy brain at the end next fresh. time. Right. So fresh and bright-eyed. I have a motion to table till the 21st of I February, second. seconded by Sophie. All those in favor? And Tom says yes also, so it's uh, unanimous. Audra, can you do a brief management? Can I, 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 I wrote to, stuff up, but the I'm gonna... peer, the peer, the peer moratorium, the, extend the peer, the peer moratorium. Consideration of extending the peer moratorium. I swear that was on the agenda. Yeah, and, and it's where we're packet. supposed to be on the agenda. Don't we need it? I saw it on there. It's on there. Where? Um, I tell you what, um, we, we need to we need to set a date. So I would, would I request the board, and this has to be a two-thirds vote a majority to approve to add an agenda item to uh, set a date for the. <clears throat> for the public hearing for the extension of the uh, um, uh, peer moratorium. I swear that I, I, I make a motion that we... I mean, we, we add an agenda item. I make a motion that we add an agenda item to select the date for the public hearing regarding the, peer, the extension of the peers, peer moratorium. Okay. Second. Oh, I'll second. It's motion made and seconded. <laughs> All's in favor. It's unanimous, so it's 100 percent. So we have because an agenda now. We can right now. The agenda. So oh, it was just a set of public was, hearing. No, it was just the agenda. No, no, I get what no. you just did, but we weren't. The agenda item wasn't for us to extend it tonight. Oh, it was to no. set a public hearing for the. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so, that so that's no big extended. deal. Okay. Which needs a, I believe, a seven-day notice. notice. So we're looking at the week of. It's the. Tw it'll be for the 21st. The public hearing will need to be on the 21st. You could, oh, you have it during that meeting? Yes. Actually, yeah, we could. We should. That's, that's really yeah. a long. We didn't do that the way last time. We had an actual public hearing. I think there was some urgency based on dates. It was. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, you want to put it in a select board oh, yeah. meeting? Okay. Yeah. All right. I make a motion. Do, do we need a motion? Yes. I make a motion that, that, we the set the date. that we set the date of February 21st for the public hearing on the extension of the peer moratorium. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All of, uh, Tom, did you have discussion? Got Caitlin. <laughs> nope, I'm in favor. All in favor, okay. Thank you. It's 5 0. Thank you very much. Now, three minutes of management reports. Okay, I'm going to go super quick. I have a written report. I'll send it to all of you as well as the backup stuff so that I don't have to go into detail. I um, received word from the school districts as to when they're having their budget hearing, so I will send you dates, times, links to the Zoom meetings are doing it all via Zoom. Um, I wrote something nice about Toboggan Nationals. The, you know, I have the timeline to town meeting memo that I'll send to all of you as part of this as well. And I think it's just good for you to all have an idea of what, what we're up against in terms of timing for when we have to have public hearings and everything. 
Um, I have a grant update. Um, things are uh, going along nicely. I won't get into it in, in my report. Um, I also wrote a long report giving background um, current status and recommendations on the breakwater um, in response to the uh, Harbor Committee's breakwater letter. Um, so that will, the, that version of it will be attached to this with other background documents, but it'll also be on the agenda for the February 21st meeting. Right. But it just gives you more time than normal to go through all of that and ask me questions. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Select board. Sophie? I, I attended the Board of Trustees, Library Board of Trustees, like, excellent. Uh, their budget is probably going to be flat, so they're good work. The second thing is we had a good flattish, flattish, yeah, yeah. No, good. Uh, we had an excellent, again, uh, meeting with the, <laughs> the McGunty Cook River Committee, Citizens Advisory Committee, super good work with people rolling up their sleeves, signing up on subcommittees, getting on to different tasks to increase public outreach and communication. The second volume of the newsletter should be, go out, be going out probably early next week. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a speaker series uh, that's going to be on the 7th of February with Nate Gray. Not today. Mar Sorry, yeah, March. you're right. Uh, so. 14th, 14th, probably, 14th. 14th. Um, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. No, the 21st. It's on the 21st. It's on the 21st. The 21st is a big day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nate Gray talking about fish uh, in the river. So, cool. And uh, you, we have great attendance on the speaker series with at least 20, 30 people, lots of questions, lots of interest. So sign up. Um, and, and on the 21st, lots of uh, announcements as well coming from the committee. Tom. Great. Before you fall down, um, there was a, a, a site walk by the planning board at the uh, proposed subdivision at 440 Belfast Road. Mm -hmm. um, it went well. The, the plans are interesting. I think there's um, some information that's available through Jeremy if anybody wants it. Uh, the planning board, the two new members, the, but the whole board in general is, is really what we should be striving for in Camden. Very well qualified in their uh, individual professions and backgrounds. Uh, impressive to see, um, but if you're interested in that particular project, uh, it's in the codes and planning office. Right, Allison. Um, we have a Midco Solid Waste meeting tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, that's the uh, budget approval and review meeting. It will be here at 6:30. Um, information about that is available on the Midcoast Solid Waste. Um, website one of the things that the board will be um, reviewing and um, uh, mo hopefully approving in some way would be um, bag fee or trash fee increases um, the small bags right now are a dollar fifty they would be going to two dollars um, the large ones would be going from 250 to um, three dollars and um, that is um, in an effort to try to keep the, the budget or the assessments flat to the towns um, to keep taxes mm -hmm. about the same. Um, the way that the interlocal agreement works with Midco Solid Waste is that um, bag fee, in, certain fee increases such as this um, do need to be um, reviewed by the municipal officials of each of the four towns. Um, so you all would have sort of the right to say, hey, you know, we really want our taxes to go up instead of our bag fees. Um, mentioned this a few other times, but if that were something that you wanted to hear a lot more about, um, feel free to attend the meeting tomorrow um, or ask for more information later. Um, I attended a meeting uh, workshop with the Historic Resources Committee. Um, there's a little subgroup uh, that is working really hard on um, the Curtis Island project and figuring out how um, this friends group can raise a bunch of money to preserve it. They're looking, um, they spent the last several weeks, several months really, Mike Scaling um, and a couple others just done an extraordinary amount of work. Um, to determine to which um, period in time they would be the most historically accurate or beneficial to restore the building buildings to. 
um, and you know, there's a whole process with the um, you know, national registry stuff. So they're doing a, a really great job and it's a great benefit to the town and the pathways committee um, working on a number of things, work the, especially an update to the pathways master plan. Um, they have that for both Camden and Rockport um, and uh, you know, all of the priority sidewalks and things like that. So if that's anything that uh, any of you have an interest in sort of weighing in on problem areas for pedestrians in town or opportunities that you want included, um, feel free to chime in. We'd love to have your input. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, everybody. Tom, especially thanks to you. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. Wow, Tom. <laughs> I said no. I already went That's over. dedication. Hey. Hey. Tom, get some rest and we'll, uh, when are you coming back, Tom? Uh, we'll be back Saturday. Enjoy the enjoy the trip and enjoy, enjoy that beautiful part of the world. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Oh, wait, wait, I'll wait for the uh, official. Oh, a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we adjourn <laughs> to the bitter end. I almost forgot. Motion made in the second. All in favor? That's even. Tom, five zero. Thank you, Tom. Right, good night. Tom, good night. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's gonna go clubbing. Now.